Hi there, good morning and welcome along to the Moda Super Series where it is a brand new series getting underway today. Yep, Series 7 is about to start here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And alongside me, darts expert Phil Bars. Phil, excited for the start of a new series? Morning, Chris. I can't wait. Series 7 is upon us. We obviously had double trouble last week to break it up, but now we're back into it. It's a, it's a long slog, but we get the 12 best players at the end of it, and it's that, that drama and that build-up that, that we love through the 12 qualifying weeks. I can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. Before we get into this week, let's have a little chat about Double Trouble. Um, you were watching it from a distance. What did you make of it? Something different? Yeah, first up, I loved the concept of that special week and Double Trouble lived up to everything we were hoping for and more. I remember sitting there planning things with you. What well, could we do this? Could we do that? And look, it was absolutely superb and Neil Duff, a worthy winner. We've seen him win a regular week here and now he's added the first special week to it. But all 12 of the players played their part in what was a really good week of darts and a different week as well. And we saw that from the reactions on social media as well, that the public loved the concept as well. Yeah, really strong lineup as well. Brutal format. Um, you know, surprised to see some of the players that didn't make it through, particularly Robert Thornton, who was cruelly denied on Friday. Um, but for you, um, Neil Duff, who he didn't do that well in, in Group A, he went into Group C to qualify. Where did he really win the week? Uh, quite simply, his finishing. He put 10% on his in and out double stats because obviously double trouble says, oh, it's not just about finishing, it's getting in as well. And we can see from the numbers there, from <clears throat> Group A to Group C to the final, he's put 10% on his finishing and his starting doubles and the semi-final and final in particular was just world class and it reminded me of when he went on to win the lakeside because his finishing was a strong point there and perhaps since that lakeside title we haven't seen the best of Neil Duff and I remember an interview he gave after he lost at lakeside it almost felt as a relief or weight had been lifted off his shoulders and now we're starting to see that version of Neil Duff going into that lakeside where he was bullish I am going to win this and the finishing was there on par as when he won at Lakeside. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Duff winning this special week. Scott Taylor winning the previous series. Worth just touching on that before we move on to the new one. £20,000 in his pocket. And it was a, a magical night here at the Live Lounge. Great moment for him. Uh, for him, incredible. And he's in that bracket of one of the best players not to have a tour card. I know we could, it, it updates and all the time and someone puts their name in it. But going from week 12 into Champions Week, we were talking about fatigue. Could it affect him? Not a chance. And he was the outstanding player. In those two weeks, at times, he was unplayable. We saw massive averages from him. And the, the title is one thing, but that £20,000 can set his whole year up in terms of darting terms because he can then go and play in this. He can go and play in that. He hasn't got to worry about funding for the year. And hopefully, look, we'd love to have Mir for another couple of years, but is he? should he be on tour for me? Absolutely, because I don't think there are 128 players better than him. He'd certainly be in that category for me, so a massive moment for Scott Taylor's career. Yeah, and that puts him in that exclusive club here at the Moda Super Series of our Hall of Fame, which of course features um, Conan Whiter, the Series 1 winner, Raymond Smith, the Australian, won Series 2, Luke Littler winning two Series back-to-back, -back, whatever happened to him, eh? Jim McEwen, the Series 5 winner, and Scott Taylor, Series 6. Phil Taylor may be a the most sort of modest champion. He didn't really like all the fanfare and the fireworks at the end, did he? No, he didn't even, but that's just, Scott, he just likes to get on with it. He's not one for the limelight, big celebrations. We had a few every now and then in massive moments, but he just likes to get on with it. But from that graphic, the one I'd love to see come back here is Raymond Smith, because we haven't seen him for, for different reasons. Obviously, he's on the other side of the world, so it's not easy to come back, but he was superb when he came over, and I'd like to see him come and have another go, because effectively, he's still the lineal champion yeah absolutely right let's get the new series a bit of focus now then um, the first week of it and we'll start by looking at the betting for this week so here are the odds outright and reese robinson a man who has won on that stage before is the shortest price he's coming in group b later in the week uh, the favorite from group a adam mold is an adc qualifier once again but he's won as that here before yeah, absolutely. And it was interesting, his social media post, he was looking forward to having another crack at Group A. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. I think Nathan Gervin and Shane McGurk are two that are reasonably priced because they are big scorers and when they get going. But Jamie Kelling is an interesting one because he's a regular here since the inception of the Super Series and the, the version before that. And he finds a way to get to Champions Week all the time. Um, or sorry, finals night all the time. And he's been to Champions Week 
before. So I think seven to one is value on Kelling considering the pedigree he has in there. Some of the others may be a little bit short. And also Lisa Ashton, we can't forget the Lancashire Road. She's playing herself back into the Lisa that we know is there. I thought she was brilliant at the seniors and she played here last week for a couple of days. So maybe that's a little bit of an advantage for her as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just finally, Phil, we, you know some of the names that are going to be in this series. Do you think we'll get a new winner at the end of it or do you think we might see someone repeat? I think we'll get a new winner. I, I really do because we're lucky now. This is the first full series since the um, Q School. So we were lucky to have some of the people falling off the tour. We could squeeze them in to the back end. But this year, or well, sorry, this, this term, we've got a full series of world-class players. We, we know the darting landscape is getting better and better all the time and not everyone can have a tour card and we're the beneficiaries of that. So I'm looking forward to it and I think we're going to have fireworks here in Series 7. Yeah, right. 13 weeks of action about to get underway. The first match is Lisa Ashton against Shane McGurk. So without further, further ado, let's get Series 7 started. Game shot and the match! And the Motor Super Series champion, Scott Taylor! Well, she needs the bullseye here and it's heavily blocked. Oh, Game what a dart that, that is. In it Game goes. Super match. performance from Shane McGurka. Big, big moment. Fourteen darts. Or oh, is it? Apparently not on the fifth leg. Adam Mould. Good morning, everyone, and welcome along to the Motor Super Series. A brand new series is getting underway this morning. And what a game to kick us off. Shane McGurk against Lisa Ashton. This could be fast and furious. Big scoring expected in this one. And I cannot wait to call in the next 15 games alongside Chris Murphy on this Monday morning. Yeah, absolutely. It has been a real fun couple of weeks. The... Champagne and caviar of the Super Series, if you like. But now it's back to the bread and butter. It's all about qualifying from the group stages and getting through to finals night. Shane McGurk, who has been to the finals before, facing Lisa Ashton, who did say that she really wants to win one of these Super Series titles. That's one of her ambitions in 2024. And, you know, didn't really perform to her best at the Double Trouble last week but she certainly did perform to her best at the world seniors just before it she did and it was a but fabulous it run from lisa her. at the seniors Game on. at the iconic circus tavern and if she can bring that form into this week she is going to be a huge danger but shane mcgurk is also a man that we have seen produce special arrows here at the live lounge 60. in portsmouth Big, big scorer is McGurk. And if he gets that firepower going, he will be hard to beat. 93. It's been a good start here for McGurk. But Lisa keeping toe with him, but will have to find a break of throw. 99. If she's to pick up the points. Yeah, when we saw her at the 81. second half of the week last week, Lisa Ashton. But as you say, Shane McGurk will be a, a tough, tough opponent for her. Has had some good runs here at the Super Series. 58. And he's one of those players who you wouldn't be surprised to see lift the trophy on Saturday night. 55. No, no surprise at all. But 1 2 6 for the opening leg. Four nineteens leaves the ball. Not this time, but we'll be back. Ashton not on a finish, but can Eight apply pressure. Six. But a fabulous setup from McGurk to leave tops. Sixty. Shane and Require forty. For the opening leg, tops for McGurk. Tens. Finds Eight tens. The first leg. And Shane the first McGurk. leg in the ledger. Of Series 7 goes to Shane McGurk. Yeah, we should remind you, of course, those that are watching last week, we have reverted to a 
standard format for the Super Series now. Best One of seven hundred. legs, first to four. A little bit more time to feel your way into a game and less time to feel your way into a leg because you now don't have to start on a double. Yeah, that Fifth, best you know. of five was absolutely brutal. Great viewing, but brutal. 100. And also worth mentioning that there has been a little bit of a, a change to the the prize money structure for this series. So players Fifth, in group, eight. well, all groups will now battle it out for a a sliding scale of prize money. The Group A winner getting a, a bonus. 40. And the Super Series 7 champion will be rewarded with a record £25,000. Which is 100. absolutely incredible from the organisers here because that, that's career-changing money for a semi-professional player that hey, maybe can't do everything. That can literally set them up. Yeah, and in any line of work not bad for two weeks effort is it i'm sure most people would take Me it too. well shane mcgurk not taking 140 as much in this leg as he would have hoped and lisa ashton has 40. replied yes. in kind mcgurk was 40. fairly comfortable on his own throw, and the Lancashire Rose is doing exactly the same here. No score. Almost a happy accident, that. Yeah, she'll be okay with that. Better there than maybe coming inside the double ten, leaving double five. Or worse, hitting Nine that single six. 15 and leaving five. 40. Back to top, to put it right. Game shot in the second. And it goes for one all. Lisa Rastin. There's a real nice rhythm to Lisa's game that we're seeing at the moment. We saw at times on the women's series game last year that, that she struggled due to, obviously, the health problems that she had to get sorted out and, and everything like that. But right now, there's a there's a real purpose and a real zip to Lisa Ashton's game, and it's great to see. 140. It's been really nice to hear Lisa talk over the last couple of weeks as well, and that desire is still 140. there. She obviously wants to go back to to Lakeside and try and pick up another crown there within the WDF. 100. Also, the one that she craves more than, than ever is that women's world match play at the iconic Winter Gardens in Blackpool 100. on her doorstep. 25. Yeah, interesting that she opted to play in a women's series rather than the world seniors champion of champions in Blackpool as well because I thought that lure of Lancashire might just make her want to play in that event but obviously getting to Blackpool for the match play is the, the priority for Lisa. Yeah I think that that just highlights her intentions for, for the year because with what the PDC have done for the ladies game there are a lot of carrots being dangled now you've got the match play uh, the Grand Slam and of course three spots at Alexandra Palace so far in this one, it's been dominant holds a throw. Lisa Ashton, forty-five. Shane Rackwell, so far 40. behind in this leg, like Shane McGurk was in the previous leg. She hit top ten. He can't hit it now, but he can hit double ten. Third leg, Shane McGurk. Another point as well, Chris, on the Lisa picking the women's series. We'll play against Do Lisa you think that? Game on. The top women have learnt because Fallon obviously missed a block of women's series when she went One to play in the World hundred. Series and it almost cost her. So do you think the rest have learnt from that experience saying, hang on a minute, we can't afford to take a, a weekend off? Yeah, I think they've also learned that I mean, that with Fallon was to finish third, wasn't it, behind Bo and Lisa? I think what Lisa's effectively saying 82. is that I'm actually now worried that they're are eight players that could stop me getting there if I take a, a weekend or two off. So it just shows the strength in depth of the, the women's game at the 140. moment. 140. Bob of course, who made a debut at the development tour this weekend. 83. Looked very good in spells as well. A few ton plus averages, some quarter final performances. And it's something that we've, Nine, we as, as Darts fans have wanted to see Bo go and, go and test herself on the, the development tour, and she certainly did that. Yeah, some success. One.
on 180. The players that have played here before and some that are coming up here at the Super Series. But what a shot that is from Lisa Ashton. She was trailing behind in the leg, but suddenly she's a massive favourite to win it. Yeah, the first time her throw was under threat, but what a response. She's going to get two darts at tops for two all. One at ten. Game shot on the fourth. And finds it level. Lisa Ashton. Two all in this one, and it's probably about right, Chris. Yep, I think so. It's been all about the Vegas throw so far. Throw first. Ninety-six. Johnny Barnes against Adam Mould in an all ADC clash coming next. Fifty-five. All good. For the ADC this week, we've got two ADC UK qualifiers and one ADC Europe qualifier. That will be rectified later in the series. Usually it's one ADC UK, two ADC Europe. There's been a slight change as well to the selection criteria for ADC Europe. They're now providing us with one qualifier and one wildcard pick each week. So for the rest of this series, you will see... Maybe a 95. host of more familiar names along with giving the opportunities to the qualifiers still every week. Yeah, just trying to find that nice blend of players from Europe. Both players on the fish. Reel it in. What we have got Luke Littler type <laughs> celebrations. It got away, Phil. It got away. And Lisa... Can't take the bait. Change required. Twenty-five. Double eight. Nine. Lisa required. First chance of a break of throw here, and this would be huge. Is that? That's an, that's again a happy accident that if she comes inside the nines, there's no Dragon finish. But the drag into the fourteens left a double, but couldn't take it. And McGurk breathes again. Game shot on the fifth leg. Second chance Shane gobbled McGurk. up by McGurk. Yeah, that was a big chance, wasn't it for Lisa Ashton there? Sick back is Lisa to throw first. That was first. the Game the goal mouth scramble where the ball couldn't find its way to the back of the net. Yeah, and the look on Lisa's face there at the back One of the hockey says it all. She knows what a Golden opportunity that was. Now the ADC Europe, by the way, have already announced many of their players for this series, and we're delighted that Whoa, Danny Janssen will be part of the field very, very soon. What a season he's having. Yeah, and I'm not going to lie, he's produced numbers that I didn't think were there because I know he won a Pro Tour, but since then he's had a torrid time on tour, and we hadn't seen any of these numbers at all from him, but this year it's been Whoa, superb. I haven't seen any of these numbers here at the Super Series for a while. Shane McGurk goes with back-to-back 180s -back in the first match of Series 7. January what a start this would be. McGurk going down first. The girl in price group and doesn't go. He wasn't far away, was he? He wasn't a badly thrown dart. It just didn't go 58. in. 58. Oh, that would have been a, a firework start to the series. McGurk is going to get the chance to seal this one. 4-2, 83. Treble 17 would leave double 16. May only be a dart at the ball. Bullseye to win it. Not there. 40. Well, Lisa Ashton will start on the bullseye here. 25, leaves treble 20, but that bullseye looks so blocked. I would have loved to have seen it just get a go at it there. So McGurk, 43. It's going to be two at tops. One more at tens. And he can't take the opportunity. At least you require 72. Double top, and neither can Ashton, and she has had her Shane chances McGuire, in this game. 20. But Shane McGurk can put it to bed. If he can bed, double ten. Game Which he does to pick up Shane the points McGuire. in the opening contest 
or Super Series 7. Lisa Ashton had her opportunities. Eight darts missed at double in that one. There were 10 darts missed at double for Shane McGurk. So when you consider that, that's a very, very healthy performance. 5-140s and 2-180s highlight that. An average just shy of 88. And McGurk gets off to a winning start. Game two will feature two ADC qualifiers. Johnny Barnes takes on Adam Mould. Welcome back, everyone. Here we are, the start of Series 7 at the Motor Super Series, and it is Shane McGurk who has taken the first two points of the new series. But in action now, someone that we've seen on this stage in Adam Mould. Yeah, the man that has hoovered up titles on the ADC. Yeah, Barnes from that northeast area, Darlington. It's such a hotbed for tungsten talent. And as Phil rightly says, Adam Mould has been such a strong ADC representative. He actually was one of the first ADC players to win a week here at the Motor Super Series. I remember it well. It was the same sort of time as Adam Warner's fan base. Now gets Johnny to throw first. Was here Game causing on. carnage at the live lounge, but in a good way. Oh yeah, that was a night to remember. Well, not don't know too much about Johnny Barnes. Hey, I will be honest, but I have heard great things about him from the likes of Glenn Durant and Scott Hunt, 100. who runs the ADC and, and many, many comps in that northeast area. And we do seem to be getting player after player Four from there. The, the obvious one from last year was Rob Grundy, who's now a tour card holder, of course. Yeah, it certainly is an absolute hotbed up there. Adam Atkinson as well had success 58. here. 
Adam Hunt before he went on to get his tour card back. One hundred. First match, if you are just joining us, was 1-4-2 by Shane McGurk really, over Lisa. Lisa Ashton, who looked good, actually, Lisa. She had 13 three-figure visits in that game, but just missed doubles at key times, and McGurk 45. took full advantage. Ninety-seven. Johnny Require, 150. So, Johnny Barnes, for his first... Attack at a finish at the Super Series. 60. Three well-thrown darts there. That's very unlucky. Adam Mould can apply pressure here. 100. Johnny required 90. Let's see which way. Oh, he's gone aggressive. Double 10. And Game pins it. Welcome there. to the Super Johnny Series, Barnes. Johnny Barnes. And Murph, that's a real interesting one that on 90, he's gone for the ball first. Yeah, some players will do that. If they are particular fans of top, so maybe that gives an indication of where he would prefer to end up. Had he not hit the treble Whoa, 15, then he would have had another go at the bullseye. Had a mould. Replies. By saying, hang on a minute, Johnny. 59. You're not going to have this all your own way, mate. It's interesting that you talk about leaving doubles. We saw Scott Taylor, our champion, Whoa, do anything to leave tops. However, for the second time this morning, it's on Murph. Well, Shane McGurk threw six perfect darts. Mould has matched it in the very next game. And that's all he can do. But something is 65. brewing here, isn't it? Twice in two matches into this series, we've had a potential perfect leg on the cards. It definitely is brewing. 100. Adam, you're required. I said 76. earlier, I expected fireworks in Series 7. I'm not sure it was that soon. But top. 56. Oh yeah, mould. Fifty-five. On double ten. Adam, you require twenty. We, he the goes for it. There. I think he was caught in two minds there. Yeah, you could see there. He, he was umming and ahhing, wasn't he? He didn't quite know Johnny what to do. Game on. But in the end, he makes the right decision, and Adam Mould is level. 40. Just, just looking at the, the setups that Johnny Barnes has got quite a unique setup. It's quite a tapered dart with a with a kite flight. Something we don't see an awful lot of these days. Ninety-five. Where Adam Mould a more traditional setup. Uh, Dennis Priestley style barrel with a standard flight. Forty-five. Forty-five. Just here, a little bit of frustration there from Mould but shouldn't be because he's in control 100. on the barn starts here. One hundred and four. You can see that he's a, a thinker. Out of Mould. But he not bothered with that bullseye in the middle. He'd been above 80 and, and maybe needing it at the end of the next visit. As it turns out, Barnes isn't on a finish. But that's really Game clever play. Well crafted end to that leg from Adam Mould. Yeah, I like the fact that he well, took the bullseye to first. out Game of the equation on the finish. Forty-six. 
45. One hundred. Cover shooting of the highest order there from Adam Mould. A little bit of frustration here from Johnny Barnes. It was a great first leg, but not quite replicated that since. Maybe a little bit of nerves here on debut. 60. Well, thank you for watching us on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. While you are here, please do subscribe. There's plenty of extra content, not just the live 66. darts. 66. Get that notification bell clicked and you can be notified when we are live or when any new content is posted. Some really good stuff recently up there, including the 95. best of the previous series. If you're new to this and want to catch up, then it's worth a watch. When are we getting the Chris Murphy Bullseye Challenge? Um, 85. Adam, you're when we get two nine darters in the same session. Ninety six. And if you are gonna get involved in the chat, keep it respectful, and we may engage with you. Requires seventy one. Mould looking for a two-leg cushion. It's going to get one dart at tops for 3-1. 51. Not there. Big moment here for Johnny Barnes. Should start on the ball. He won't be scared of it. 71. And we require 20. But Mould for a two-leg cushion. It's wild. But recovers it well. Fourth leg. Adam Mould. A little bit of emotion from him there as well because Dart 1 was poor for his standards. But recovered the, the situation. To throw first. He's now Able. on the cusp of his first two points. 60. As I was saying about our YouTube channel, some extra content come out this week, including a special tournament that was played between the players last week, not live. The players actually paired up for a couple of events. We've also 60. got the usual bullseye challenge, but with a difference. Well, there was that. I think that's already up, actually, with a difference, the, the bullseye challenge based on the double trouble format last week. We'll do our bullseye challenge this week. And there's also a, a video where the players are actually going to be one putting the darts in the board, but not using their hands. I'll, I'll leave that one teased like that for now. Murph loves a tease, doesn't he? 96. And that was filmed last week. That was very good 60. fun. Had a bold having fun here. He's taken control of this contest. Forty-seven. But a little slip there just opens the door for Johnny Barnes to get back in this one. Another treble. One hundred. Would apply pressure, and he's done that because he will be back for the eighty-one. Punished the slip from Mould. Fifty-four. Johnny require 81. 12 for ball. Bullseye for one back. 39. Adam Doesn't go. And Adam Mould should start on the ball. 45. Johnny require 42. Game shot in the fifth leg. Well, Barnes stays Johnny in Barnes. it with that nice clean kill of the 42. We've Sigma seen when he's got Dan in and around Able. the doubles, he's been clinical, but just his scoring's gone astray at times in this one. 46. I think 26. who his throw reminds me of. He, he sort of almost stands 
it appears that he stands just in his sort of normal walking position. 60. Full front of the body is... Yeah, there you see that the front foot is touching the hockey rather than where Adam Mould, it's the side of the foot. 60. Very Gary Anderson. Gary Anderson stands very toe on. Yeah. What you do do when you stand this way is you get a stance where you can keep your arm all aligned much more easily. It can be the tendency to throw from the side of your head when you stand straight on. 40. Maybe just slightly more difficult to be sight aligned. 58. Just watching him throw there, the the pullback doesn't come back very far, does it? It's still quite a distance from his face, where we see Adam Mould is almost under his eye. 100. Yeah, it seems like a, a natural throw rather than one that's been coached. But that's one of the beautiful things about this sport, isn't it? That everybody has a, a different way. There is no right or wrong. There are some key principles that will... Be there for every decent dart 44. player. Now that's just maybe given Barnes an opportunity for optimism. Ninety-nine. And then if he may have used the ball with the last dart. Well, that's given Mould an opportunity to beat Barnes. Double eighteen is the target. 60. But it hasn't been found, and Johnny, Johnny will have one uh, double at least. It's going to be two for a level game. Can he use that? He can. The sick flag. And again, Johnny when Barnes. Johnny Barnes gets down to a double, he doesn't pass the opportunity up. But Adam Mould will be kicking Seven himself. Two match starts have come, and they've disappeared. Game and now on. you'd say Barnes is favourite. Well, he has the darts, and usually the man with the darts in a deciding leg could be so cold, especially when they find two trebles in the first visit. It's a game that Mould has always been in control with until now. And again, we get a great little shot of 60. Johnny Barnes there that there is hardly any backswing compared to Mould's that comes right back under his eye. 140. 95. There you see that the mould throw. Uh, again, every throw is natural to a certain extent, but it does look more sort of how you would expect to come out of a, a coaching school. I just think mechanically it works better. You often get Adam, you're like 167. those who throw like Johnny Barnes. They'll have real hot spells, but real cold spells. This could be a hot finish. Oh, not quite. 139. So Johnny from here, will he get a match start? Treble 18 would leave double 16. And he's not going to get a match start, so Mould will be back. Adam, you require 28. 28. May help him. Maybe hindered him. He's hit this already, and he's hit Game it again. Adam Mole breaks Adam Barnes Mould. in the deciding leg to win the all-ADC encounter in the second match of week one of Modus Super Series 7. There we see the numbers. He was the better player in the game. There's no doubt about that, averaging almost 10 points more than Johnny Barnes, but the finishing from Barnes was excellent there, and if he can keep that up, he will pick up points in this group, no doubt. So Mould wins, following in the footsteps of Shane McGurk. The final two players to play in Group A are coming next. It's the ADC Europe qualifier, Timmy Fever Brugger against Nathan Gervin.
Welcome back, everyone, for the final round of fixtures in the first block of three. There we have Timothy having a chat with Owen for the first time. It must be funny because Nathan's there laughing as well. Well, I think... Obviously, Timothy Verbrugger has never played here before, so he's asking the referee about certain things. Nathan Gervin has, and he feeling pretty at home on that stage, as we see. But yeah, Gervin seeing the funny side of whatever was being discussed there. But this is Timothy Verbrugger, the Belgian player, making his debut here at the Moda Super Series, and he... As I said, he's acclimatising himself to the stage against a two-time World Youth Championship runner at one in each code, Nathan Gervin. First leg, it's Timothy of Scotland. to first. Game on. Uh, I think for those who, anyone else who's new watching, you might wonder how the referee keeps all the numbers in his head. Well, I'll let you into a secret. There is a monitor to the to the left of the dartboard, to the side of the stage, that has the scores on. The, our version of a marker is... Someone in the production gallery who inputs those scores. So I think no, Verbrugge was asking about that and asking about all the mechanics of it. He may have watched it and knows that the players have to wait in between in between visits. Uh, not in between visits, in between legs for 10 seconds. So you can just see it to the left of your screen there. And that's where the information of what the players have scored and what they've got left can be found. 85. Yeah. One thing I've noticed as well, Nathan Gervin seems to be playing with a new dart from the last time he was he was here. Twenty eight. Fifty five. And here we have Timothy's darts, a very Straight barrel dart, nothing One. out of the ordinary there. There we have Nathan's dart, very tapered end to it, a bit of grip at the back. Certainly 50. very different from what he was using last time he was here. 78. Perfect first start for Gervin. 125, Timothy, require 98. 78, Nathan, you require 87. For Gervin, after he's finished tying his shoelaces up. Well, very wise. Never know when you're going to trip and fall flat on your face, which he might do in darting terms in this visit because he's gone wayward there. That leaves 78. He was going for a double 90, but he played it rather safe. Almost too safe. And for Bruggen, it's a wild dart, but he recovers the situation. Timothy And it is his first leg at the Motor Super Series in the ledger. Second leg is Nathan to throw first. Game on. Yeah, Nathan, one of those youth players that's been spoken about for a while now and he was so close to getting his tour card a couple of years ago. But he's only a baby in darting terms and we've seen him do some brilliant things and I'm sure he's going to illuminate this week. 60. One hundred and nineteen. Forty-seven. McDervin, again, one of those players that's got bundles and bundles of talent. Doesn't always come out, does it? And he's one of those enigmatic 92. arrows players. So it's hard to... I was going to ask you what you expect from him this week, but I suppose it's expect the unexpected, isn't it? Absolutely. I think he's... When he's hot, he's going to be very hot. But 
when the radar is slightly off, he he struggles and. Oh, I think he'll get to, to Saturday night. I just think the scoring power that he has, that he'll find his way to Saturday. But it's then, can he hook it up on one night? 45. Nathan, you require 50. Well, can he get going in this match here? Double 16. The first start, a little ropey. That's why he was just sort of checking it was in the 18. It was pretty close to not being. 18. Doesn't find the double 16, but he does have time to remedy that. Yeah, that dart was a little too close for comfort in the one. But has time on his side in this 41. leg. Nathan, you require 32. For a level game. Double 16. Game show clinical. Second leg. Nathan and he'll, he'll settle down from that as well. Yeah, playing a bit of an unknown quantity. Now, Timothy to throw first. In Timothy. Game on. As mentioned, coming through the ADC Europe ADC qualifiers. One hundred. That's a better line there from Gervin. First two darts just above using them as markers to find the trouble with the last dart. It's when he goes below is the issue. One hundred. But again, Gervin 60. sniffing blood here. But this could be the break opportunity he needs. One hundred. A huge two treble visit there. Gets him down to a finish. And we'll have time on his side to get rid of the one six one. But the showman he is, don't be surprised if he goes for the ball if he finds the first two trebles. Gotta take the one off sooner or later. Why not get rid of it first? May see a Shanghai shot from Gervin when he comes back, having settled by landing that opening 99. double. Nathan, you require 120. 60, 20 tops. I couldn't get up above that dart. 60. Timothy, you require 110. Gervin's letting back in here. Going to get a dart, double 18. 74. And the lucky was never really in. 60. Well, that leaves him on 50. And it's back to double 16, which this time he nails in one dart to take the lead in this match. The little look he had there, I think he was contemplating going for the ball. Full flag, it's Nathan. Yeah, there's a time and a place, and I don't think that was it. There's a debut for his opponent here. Game on. Timothy Verbrugge, uh, 32 years of age from Belgium. Away from darts. Phil, he's a, a window cleaner. Where have we heard that before? <laughs> it does seem to be one of those Warm jobs that hunt. has excellent dart players. In fact, there's another PDC Europe qualifier for later in the series who's also a window cleaner as well. Yeah, but you can't just say window cleaner. It doesn't quite have the same. Yeah, Ryan Searle, obviously, was the... The obvious one. He was having a great season, by the way. But I, I do find it fascinating that a bloke who cannot, can't really see 45. cleans windows and plays darts for a living. I remember speaking to him about this, that he's very close to have his driving licence taken off of him because of his 59. eyesight. <laughs> he throws those 34 grand bombs as well. One yeah, three hundred. finals in a row on the Pro Tour. That takes some doing. Winning one of them this year, Ryan Searle. I, I think he'll have a really good year this year. But one people always hundred. ask, oh, who's the next one to win a TV major? I think he'll go close. Yeah, absolutely. He has been close before as well. Gervin, 
grouping Whoa, those darts pretty closely. 180. Known as Timo to his friends. Is Timothy. And this is that, that hot go. spell that we spoke about. 180 followed by 76 in three. No trouble at all for a 15 data. Fifth leg, it's Timothy to throw first. Yeah, it's, a, it's a modern characteristic of the younger players these days that their hot spells are ridiculous, but it's just sustaining them for long periods. 60. I feel a study coming along, Phil, because there's lots of studies out there that in the current world, younger people have 22. shorter concentration spans. I just wonder if that's actually part of it with younger darts players where they maybe don't keep the focus that the likes of Phil Taylor did 100. in years gone by and could just do it leg after leg when they can just flick a switch and suddenly go 12-12, bang, bang. And then can do stuff like this. And that comes down to the, the formats as 28. well, which we see certain players play so much better in set play because they don't have to be switched on for every moment of the match. Where in, in leg play, if you have a five-minute off spell, you could be three or four legs down in the blink of an eye. Sixty. That's one we could do here. Yeah, potential set play format in some guys. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it, to get Not set play and it. short format together? But maybe the sets only have to be best of three. Best of three. Best of three. Sixty. There we go. Sorted. Can he sort this out? Don't worry, I'm here all week. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy will be here all week, but 54. it's a, a bit of a baptism of fire, this. Though he could still turn it around. 48 required to cut the gap to a single leg. 48. It's going to be two darts at tops. Eight. The first one wasn't really a marker, but he will be back. But how much pressure will this tops be under? Another one makes it interesting. 80. I don't think that was troubling the 40. treble 20. Will this trouble the double 20? The answer is no. Nor the double 10. Or the double 5. 30. But Gervin, not on a finish. Should he have bust with Gervin not on a finish? Hey, the board management comes into play. They go back to tops. Yeah, it's probably a sign of panic, wanting to just get it done as soon as possible. And in the end, he does get it done. But Gervin will be hoping to do that. Straight away now. Not sure that the referee Owen Binks has perfected the pronunciation of the surname there because Timothy, I think, just corrected him as he walked back after winning that leg. I think we'll have to get a substitute Six. in tomorrow, Phil. Yeah, we'll, we'll get someone warmed up now. <laughs> the only problem is now I've just uh, dug a hole for us because we've got to say it right, haven't we? Uh, at some point, I'll butcher it, no doubt. I'll tell you exactly how to pronounce it. Are you ready? It's Timothy. 85. <laughs> or if you're really struggling, Timo... <laughs> Well, Nathan's not struggling. 180. A fabulous maximum in what he hopes is the last leg of this game. Hang on a minute. 180. Nathan, you're 131. Fifty-seven. A one forty or a one three six would make life very interesting here. It's not going to happen. So, Gervin coming back for 74. 100. Nathan requires 74. Options? Well, that wasn't one of them. And it will be the bolt. 49. 
And the Bruja could keep himself in this match. His first at the Super Series. Now he needs 25 and Bolt. How much can he see? That looks awkward. 38. Couldn't Making find it, so Gervin will be back. He's missed one match start. He's going to get another two. One more at fours. Opportunity Timothy has gone. 38. Double 19. Overcooks it. If you're going to go straight no forward, score. you've got to attack it, Dart 1. Maybe you require four. Another opportunity for Gervin. And this time Game he doesn't pass it up. Nathan, Nathan Gervin Gervin. gets his campaign off to a winning way. 4-2 over the debutant Timothy Verruggen. And there we have it. 80 average for Gervin. We know he's a better player than that. But two points is the important thing and he grows in stature. But coming up after the break, Lisa Ashton will return for her second game. Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth, a game four of week one of Moda Super Series 7. And it's two players who were beaten in their opening games, but both players who put up decent fights in those defeats. Lisa Ashton went down 4-2 to Shane McGurk in her opening match, despite finding plenty of trebles in that game. And she takes on Johnny Barnes, a debutant here at the Super Series today. He went down 4-3 to... Adam Mould, fellow ADC qualifier, and he takes on a four-time world champion in game two. Yeah. I just wonder, will there be some nerves here for Johnny playing someone of Lisa's reputation and, Lisa and stature within the game? First. Game on. Owen Binks, our official for the day. 40. Lisa 
Let's slow out the blocks in this one. 45. 45. Can Johnny Barnes jump all over that? Another treble would be handy. And finds one. All of a sudden, he's 140. Stolen the darts, but Ashton responds in true Lancashire Rose 55. style. Forty-one. One hundred. Depending on where the first couple of darts are, we may see the ball come into play here. She may use the ball and wait for it. Forty-one. So, Johnny Barnes. Sixty. Will get an opportunity to break the Ashton throw. 139. Johnny Buck, 106. Will he get a dart? Still a chance. Treble 17. Would have left tops, but he's not going to get the opportunity. At least you require so. 40. Ashton tees up tops on the first and day. pins Lisa tops 1 0. To Lisa Ashton. And there was just a slight glimmer there for Barnes, Johnny but couldn't take it. Game on. One hundred. Yeah, this will be a, an acid test for Johnny Barnes. He performed well in his opening match, but many times we've seen One debutants, hundred. and I think the same will be said of Timothy Verbrucker as well, that once you start to lose two or three games... One hundred. Then it can turn into four, five, a day, two days. 54. In some cases, sadly, three days. And then that can become a tough week then. A tough thing to get out of. So an early win is often imperative hey, for these debutants. Not even debutants. We saw Kevin Painter last week. He wasn't playing badly. But the first two 100. days, just just couldn't win. That everything went against him. That, that could have done. People were taking out big finishes when he was sat on a double. He, he hey, clipped the wire on something. But we saw that once once you do get that win, it's like a massive relief. One hundred. Forty-five. Leads your one hundred and forty-seven. Not the setup he would have wanted, because you get the feeling that this will be under pressure. Ninety-seven. Pressure applied. Eighty-eight. May only get a dart at the ball. May not get a dart at all. Almost unforgivable there, Murph, not to get a dart at the 36. ball. Thirty-six. Yeah, and and that's required fifty. Exactly what I was just talking about just start to get more and more nervous and the more mistakes that are made the more mistakes that will be made and Lisa Ashton punishes that mistake to the hilt so look it's Lisa to throw first yeah, even when Able. you are a little bit nervous and maybe not playing at your very best make sure of those big numbers 60 give yourself the opportunity but it is Lisa Ashton who is in complete 81. control here at 2-0 100. 99. I know we spoke about it at the top of the show, Murph, but who who would you make favourite for this Group A? Good question. Um, a very good question. Probably would agree with hey, Shane five. McGurk. Um, but probably Adam Mould might be the second favourite. If Nathan Gervin turns it on, he could be up there. But equally, Lisa Ashton, 95. I think, has, has got an opportunity as well. I think it will be between 
those four, I would just have to give Shane McGurk the edge. One. Yeah, I agree. I think his scoring power may just give him extra opportunities. Forty-four. Journey record one hundred and thirty-six. One hundred. Last record, start gets him to double eighteen, but will he get a go? Bullseye or treble fourteen? She went for treble fourteen. Ninety. So this is to get the Johnny break back. Thirty-six. Double eighteen for Barnes. Last one, Game finds it, he's Johnny getting Barnes. a little bit nervy, but Johnny Barnes does break back. Four flag, it's Johnny to throw first, game on. Eighty-five. Forty-one. He's has just dropped off 60. the last leg in a bit here. The, the scoring prowess just isn't there at the moment. 85. And Barnes is making hay. 140. The library raise from him there. The last start didn't find the target. 100. Looking to set up 216. 45. Three trebles, but not the three he wanted. And that little smirk says it all. 97. 97. All about the setup shot for both players here. 100. Treble last die in hand comes to Barnes's rescue. What can Lisa Ashton do 60. in reply? Trebleless. So 71 for a level game. 18 for tops. Tops for a level game. game Clinical from Barnes. That's what we saw in his first game as well. The doubling isn't the issue, Murph. No, absolutely not. Lisa to when he first. gets there or game. thereabouts, the leg ends up in his pocket. One hundred. Still do maintain that I think this is a big game for Johnny Barnes. I think the biggest game is going to be game three for him. Game eight for us when he plays against Timothy Verbrugge. If at that point 59. both players have lost both of their games, I think we could see it go one direction for one player for the rest of the group and one go the opposite way. One hundred. Yeah, someone's O will have to go. However, that might not be the case. Barnes could win this match. He's in a good spot to break here. Yeah, from 2-0 down, he's played some good stuff here. It just feels as if he's thrown a little bit quicker as well. A little bit more rhythm to his game. 105. Johnny Rakoa, 96. Seventy-eight. Oh, the rare require 120. reprieve given by Johnny Barnes has been excellent with his finishing. It looked like he would be again when he found the treble 20, but he will return 100. with three darts in hand and a decision Johnny to make. 18. Going straight for it, but that one's wild, Game but recovers the, the situation play. well, Johnny and he Barnes. just apologises because that first dart at double nine was very erratic. And, and we first. talked about the throw in the Game opening game and the throw does lend itself to erratic visits, doesn't it? Erratic darts. We saw 70. that there. I mean, I did think he might split. I never thought he'd split that way, Phil. Yeah. Mark that one down in the diary. The old 18 route, 12, double three. 59. But it could be pivotal. Do you think it will catch on that way? Uh, uh, 50. Well, I suppose it's no, no real difference to a player going 60. 
three double one when they're on five. It's got the same jeopardy with the with the two darts you're giving yourself at double. Yeah, and it's no, interesting. So something that we're seeing more and more now on five is is three double one. The players are going for location on the board rather than 60. how it breaks down. Which I, which I kind of get as well. If everyone went that route, then everyone would always go for double 16, wouldn't they? But you get a lot of top players these days. And Johnny Barnes is on the verge here 60. of Johnny running off four straight legs. He's going to get a dart for a ton topper. 140. Uh, brilliant, brilliant from Johnny Barnes, the way he's turned this game around. And that would have been a sensational way to end it. For a first win on the Super Series 52. stage. Johnny required 32. Double 16. Go and it goes. And first start Johnny in hand. Barnes. Johnny Barnes has beaten Lisa Ashton for his first win at the Moda Super Series. And again, the finishing was superb from him. 40% high of 71. 85.94 for Barnes as he bags the points. But coming up after the break, it is going to be a blockbuster between Nathan Gerben and Shane McGurk. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where Nathan Gerben and Shane McGurk are about to do battle on the live lounge stage. After Johnny Barnes got his first victory, he was beaten by Adam Mould in his first match, but beat Lisa Ashton in his second. Shane McGurk also beat Ashton in game one. Gerben himself got a win against the Belgian Debutant Timothy Verbrugge, who will be in action next against Mould. But this one, Phil Bars, has the potential to have some fireworks. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. But Two players with first. amazing ceilings. And if they can both produce that, this could be over in rapid time. Six. 
140. Once that first start of McGurk's is just sat up like that, you know the other two are going to be there or thereabouts. 58. Ninety-seven. Just look at Nathan Gervin there. I know we've, we've spoken about it a bit before, but 57. a product of the Alan Souter Academy up in Scotland, and then mentored by our very own Chris Mason as well. It's not Six. not bad to have on on the CV, is it? Who you've learnt your trade from? Absolutely. 95. He's the kind of player that benefits from that, that mentor as well, if you like. 96. Not necessarily a coach to Six. tell him how to throw the darts, but he, he's an animated type, isn't he? A lot going on just to, to keep his calm. Yeah, where's his heart on his sleeve? 56. Shane, you've 144. Eighty-eight. Nathan Rakoya, one hundred and seventy. The big fish. Another. Reel it in, Nathan. Can you? One hundred and rush of blood. <laughs> yeah, it was a long way away. I don't think it was that close, Nathan. Either. <laughs> Interesting that he chose to engage with Shane. Some dark players don't like it that. They they want to focus Nathan fully on McCoy themselves and not have, particularly before attempting to finish themselves. Game shot in the first leg. And Gerben Nathan cleans Gerben. up the remainder in one dart. Second leg at Shane to throw first. Game on. Just see him chuntering to himself over at the, the drinks table there. Nathan, you've won the leg. Don't need to beat yourself up. 60. Ninety three. Sixty. Nathan knows that this is a big visit. Just composed himself before he threw because McGurk started slowly on throw here. 96. 130. Superb four. cover shooting from Gervin. And he has the McGurk throw under pressure here. Whoa, but then a trademark. Maximum from the arrow. Gets him back into the leg. 58. Shane of a coin, 105. And this leg swings once more. Looks at trouble 15 for tops, but now Gervin. 118 for 2 0. 18 for tops. Tops for a break. Clips the bottom wire. It's not there, Nathan. And that grimace from him, he knows it was close. Now McGurk, looking at the same target, tens, and can't take it. He's hugging the wire on both Nathan doubles. But Gervin comes back for 2-0, double 10. Can he use it? Yes, he can, is the Double's answer. We get a Nathan little celebration Gervin. from him as well. Even on a Monday morning, he knows how big this game is. Between Your himself and McGurk, if one of them wants to win the Group A title. 
Just thought, McGirt, then just watching Nathan's every move. I think he's maybe getting a little impatient there with the decision of Gervin to take his time before throwing. But he's commanding the stage at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, he's dictating the pace here. Which again is a is a trait of a good player, being able to dictate the stage and your demeanour. And everything like that. For for a young man, he has got a lot of presence up there. Seventy eight. You spoke about Kevin Painter. He's certainly a player who commands the stage. 96. Looking at some of the players that are coming up here at the Super Series. I'm going to reveal a few names throughout the day that will be making debuts. I've already mentioned one, Danny Janssen. I'm not going to tell you when yet, but I'm going to tell you they'll make their debuts this series, some of these players. 99. I think we're 144. 144 for Gervin for 3-0. Not going to happen. So I'm just looking at your pad there. There are a few that I like the look of 25. as well. Yeah, there will be a, a couple of debutants next week. We'll reveal those before this week is out. And before the series is out, we're going to reveal our next specials week as well. Those of you who enjoyed last week will be looking forward to hearing that. Double 13 here. Game shot oh, what Gervin. a shot that is. Nathan Gervin. What's very, very interesting here is that Shane to throw first. you've got the group favourite in Shane McGurk and you've got the enigma that is Nathan Gervin. And Gervin's completely bossing it. But I can guarantee Nine, you will see him in some games against respectfully meant lesser opposition where he'll get beaten this week. Oh, 100%. 100%. 120. It's that big game mentality, isn't it? That big match. Player thing. Can really get pumped for certain matches, but maybe lose focus in others. But ha having said that, let's not be too critical. He's made a great start to the day here. 4 2 win against the Brugger, and now potentially hey, about to whitewash McGurk. I remember in our old guys, when we were still playing in Southampton, there was a day he looked done and dusted. I can't remember if it was Group B or Group C. But he went into the last day having to win all of them to have any chance. And he just went through the card with the absolute most utmost elegance you've ever seen, ever. 140. Forty-eight. Nathan, you reckon 160. Well, this would be the perfect way to finish a polished performance. McGurk hasn't been bad in this game, by the way. He's averaging, well, before 60. that visit, exactly the same as Nathan Gerber, 92.2. Yeah, it's been a real quality contest. But it's just Gerber that's, that's bossed it in the big moments. 44. Nathan, you require 100. May go tops, tops. That was the intention. And there's no guarantee 60. that McGurk will clean up 70. 70. No, may only get one dart at a double. Will only be one dart. And that dart is at double 16. Brilliant four, from McGurk. Shane McGurk. Under pressure. The arrow has a leg on the board. Don't apologise, Shane. If you Nathan to throw first, game on. Very, very, very interesting that because who knows? There's still a, a chance for McGurk in this game. He can get a break and he's starting the right way. 180. Yeah, even at 3 0, and if it had been 3 0 the other way as well, I'd have still said exactly hey, the yes. same that the scoring power both of these have, they're never out of games. Ninety six. Yeah, one may improve, one may regress. One hundred and forty. 
I like that little bit of grit that Nathan's got in his game as well. That we see with some power scorers and they they just like like to do the the glory side of the game, the Rolls Royce side of the game. But he's not scared to roll his sleeves up and, and get into a dogfight either. Well, this could be the pivotal point. Which way will the scales tip? Gervin is going to get the opportunity to get the job done. And it was just interesting, that slight little camera shot we got at him. As soon as Gervin missed that treble, he knew. Yeah, he started preparing for this moment then, didn't he? And this is the moment. But how much can he see? He's having a good look at it. And he's over the top. That dart maybe just have been blocking some of that double. I tell you what was interesting from that moment, though. Never once did he take his eyes off the target, even when he stepped back. Game but John McGurk is player. back in this one. Shane the 64 McGurk. goes. And we are effectively back on throw. And this is just Sigurdic developing Shane to throw first. into some contest Game here. On. Remember, Gervin has missed a match dart. Very, very good game of darts, this. Shane McGurk averaging north 60. of 90. After five legs, Nathan Gervin pretty much around that 90 mark himself. In fact, he'll probably go above it now. 125. Forget probably. One hundred and forty. Ninety-five. There we have it. Great contest, this one. Yeah, top quality stuff between two potential stars of the future. One hundred. Who knows what they may go on to achieve, but they're certainly giving these a a little glimpse here of what they can both do. We've seen Nathan stepping on the Pro Tour from time to time as well and produce fireworks. And nine data against Adrian Lewis springs to mind. 89. Done well to work his way back into this because he was in danger of being swept aside. Nathan Gervin, of course, did face a match start in that previous leg. 134. Shane requires 72. Huge moments here. It's going to stay there. Tops for a level game. 52. Can't Nathan take the opportunity. Over to you, Nathan Gervin. And he is going to get another match dart. Double 16. 71. And it's another one that goes the wrong side of the target. That's two across 20. different legs now. He couldn't have got any closer. Will McGurk punish him? Has to be aggressive. And he is. We have a level game. Shane McGurk. Three apiece and a penny for Nathan Gervin's thoughts right now. He's missed two Seven match darts across two legs. Game on. And now he has the darts. Yeah, 3-0 becomes 3-3. Three, three. 66. And then two scores of three from Nathan Gervin that made what was looking like a very good visit turn into something ugly. Yeah, when your first dart is sat up in that treble 20 and you only score One 66, hundred. it's a disappointment. And then McGurk's had the opposite feeling there, two single 20s and... Last dart finds the treble. Again, that's three consecutive six darts and five, sorry, four out of six that have drifted into that one segment, which gives you the inkling that he might be just feeling the pressure one a little bit in this hundred. last leg. He needs a two treble visit here. And he's got one on the floor. That could be an absolute disaster for Gervin. 40. There it is, because now McGurk has stolen the darts in this decider, and it would be for four on the spin. What a recovery dart that is. He's down to a finish after nine. Gervin won't 
lie down, but again, it's a, a drifter. Had he just stayed straight in this match, he'd be pretty oh, much with far. Shane McGurk in this leg. Shane McCoy, one hundred. But it's six starts from one six one to complete the great escape. We spoke about stage demeanour earlier that Nathan was dictating it, but now it is McGurk with all the aces. Ninety three. This has to be a max. Needs another bare minimum. 140. She only requires now he hopes. Well, Gervin himself has missed a couple of match starts. Now Shane McGurk has two of his own. And he Shane only needs one. The, the comeback is complete. A delightful game of darts between two really, really good players. But Nathan Gervin will leave the stage a little upset after squandering a three-leg lead in that one. McGurk winning four on the spin to turn it around. A very good performance from him. 93.54, a nice average. Gervin, who tretters to that brilliant 119 checkout, but he loses from three nil ahead. So McGurk makes it two from two. Up next, Adam Mould. He's looking to do the same thing when he takes on Timothy Vavruga. Welcome back, everyone. What a game we saw before the break. Shane McGurk coming from three legs down to beat Nathan Gervin in a high-quality contest. And Adam Mould has the chance to join McGurk on four points at the top of Group A here. First leg, it's Adam to throw first. Timothy's. Game on. Second game. Here, yeah, and we saw glimpses of what he can produce. 
36. Let's see if he's any more relaxed after his opening game. Forty one. Forty four. Adam Mould's radar not quite there yet. Spraying him around. Forty one. Trouble 19 comes to his rescue. Sixty. Fifty seven. Not the best start from both here. A little bit of nerves, perhaps. Yeah, surprising from Adam Mould. You'd think he'd come into this game thinking it's a game he can dominate. One hundred and yeah, maybe he wants it a little bit too much, though, trying too hard to impress. Yeah, let's see if they can feel their way into it. Mould beat Johnny Barnes in his open. It did go the distance. Timo was beaten 4-2 by Nathan Gervin. And what a comeback that was against Gervin from Shane McGurk in the previous match. 3-0 down, wins 4-3. Just two give you an indication of how rare that is. It generally happens once a week here at the Moda Super Series. That's once in 104 60. matches. Does he require 122? Sh should start 18s. Treble leaves the ball. It's not going to go. So Mould will get 56. the opportunity at the same target. Bullseye. Nine. Couldn't have gone any closer. He requires sixty six. Well, that's okay, because that leaves double eighteen. Thirteen. Adam, you require twenty five. Options for Adam. Conventional route. Nine for double eight. Needs to come inside. Nine. But not enough. He requires thirty six. And Timo gets a second chance. Game shot in the first leg. And the Timothy second chance Vavruga. is taken right in the middle of the double. And Timothy Vavruga so breaks Timothy through. To throw first. Game on. You can see there, Mould in the background, not happy right now. 85. Just can't get that first start where he wants it at the moment. It's always low. 100. Yeah. You can see, he just doesn't look comfortable. He wasn't comfortable in the background, as Phil alongside me rightly pointed out, but he also wasn't comfortable when he was at the hockey. 55. It does stand a long way across to the right-hand side, Adam Mould. Yeah, very Stephen Bunting-esque. 140. Our commentary position here at the Super Series gives us pretty much a bird's eye view of where the players stand. 60. We're next to the studio, so we can see straight out, and he's right at the edge of that hockey. You get the right opponent, say it was him and Andrew 85. Gilding, they could actually stand in their positions at the same time. Andrew Gilding, of course, who will head to Minehead this weekend to defend his UK Open title. One hundred and eighty. How's that a year ago, by the way? And they just got a glance of how far across he does stand. It means that, of course, the distances to the doubles are different when you when you do stand to a certain side. You're much closer to 100. say double six and double ten than you are to double eight and double sixteen. Oh, hello. 85. That was fraught with risk, wasn't it? I'm, I'm not sure on that one. Well, that was just the right side of the wire. 
but that one is a long way off, and this is a bit of a kind of mouldy performance from Adam. Double 18 for 2 0. Game shot on the second leg. 2 0, it is. I think, and I'm not a mind reader, but I think that Timothy went that way because he'd hit double 18 in the previous leg and wanted another go at that target. I fully agree with you. But I don't like it when your opponent's on a finish. I get the 25 route when they're not. 121. Guarantee yourself a chance of winning. Ninety six. One hundred and forty. Sixty two. 62. That's the perfect first start for Adam Mulby. Can't use it. 80. When I saw that one kicking up in the top of the bed, I expected another one to join it. 41. Adam, you're requiring 160. Well, he's got some breathing space in this leg at least. 60. I was going to say, his maths has to be good here. 101. Yeah, after the second dart, he couldn't have left a check out. Yeah, needed to use the 18s. Well, Moulds had that breathing space, but now he's left himself holding his breath a little bit because he's left himself a, a dangerous double here. One. 60. Where he could end up making a real mess. At least do it now, rather than the second dart, I suppose. Eight. But he has ended up in the madhouse. Did he require 141? Yeah, we question board management quite a lot, and that one certainly is up there, because now he's in that 57. tricky situation. Did he require two? No score. Exactly this. Did he require 84? Because now... Timothy looking at 84 for 3-0. He's going to get two darts for 3-0. Only oh, the needs the one. It Timothy is 3-0. And Adam Mould only has himself to blame for losing that leg. He got himself well, into an absolute Timothy mess that he didn't first. need to be in. Game on. We were talking two games ago, potential game three of the day for Timothy and Johnny Barnes being pivotal, but they both might have won a game by then now. Barnes 100. beating Lisa Ashton and Verbrugger 3-0 up against Adam Mould, and he will win the match unless we see lightning strike twice in consecutive games. And 60. stats tell us that that isn't likely. Yeah, usually once a week. So that's it for 3-0 deficits being overturned statistically, but 25. anyone who's ever... Put a chip on a roulette wheel knows that the same number can roll in twice. Usually the one where your chip isn't. 180! 180 red. 60. Adam Mould has stolen the darts here, but he was in a similar position only a couple of minutes ago and made a mess of it. 42. And you can just see he's playing with his own emotions right now. That from moment one, he hasn't looked settled or comfortable on that stage. 100. 100. Well, you called it the low dart causes 26. him all sorts of trouble and you can see that evident in that visit. He was trying to basically bend the darts around it and ended up in the adjacent segments instead. 125. And now he's staring down the barrel of 4-0. 91. 91 for Timothy when he comes back. He has to think about this as well. 66. Timothy, require 91. 
Well, options here. Treble 14, it looks like. So he's going to lay up now and 51. hope Adam, the mold doesn't take out 127. End game. If he doesn't, it will be the end game for Adam Mould in this match. Nine, a match that we thought he might Timothy dominate, McGuire, but in fact, 40. one that he's been dominated in. As Timothy Verbrugge looks for tops for 4-0. 20. Well, Chance goes begging. Adam, 28. Adam Mould breathes again. Double 14 to get a leg on the board. Stable seven. Game shot on the fourth leg. And even Adam though he's Mould. hit it, he's still not happy. Well, that's the third time he's hit double seven in five legs he's won today. If he played gets Adam to throw first. Game on. If he played at double start week, then we know which one he'd be starting on. Yeah. 140. Adam Mould, not one to hide his emotions. Timothy, on the other hand, stood at the back of the stage with absolutely ice-cold emotions. 100. One hundred and eighty. Here's Adam Mole just starting to move through the gears here. One hundred. It should have been all over. It's not. Is Mold going to produce another comeback? Twenty-five. Well, he's made a great, great fist of this fifth leg on fifty-six after just nine darts. And that will put Timothy on Adam notice, won't it? Does not want to end up missing this on the inside. Game shot the that will leg. be a relief Adam for Adam Mould. Even though it was a dozen dart leg, a brilliant leg of darts. I can so imagine to Timothy to throw first. Game on. the relief that he'll have gone through when he saw that go in because we've seen him get in a mess before. Well, it was carbon coffee, wasn't it? That that double ten going inside got him in all kinds of trouble 81. in leg three. So three nil now becomes three two, and the very real prospect of two great escape matches occurring back to back. Fifty seven. Fabulous first start. Can't follow it. One hundred. Sixty. It was a fabulous leg last time from Mould, but can't follow it up here. Sixty. Fifty-seven. Chasing round the board, trying to find a treble. Ends up with none. 60. Well, stopped in his tracks 60. here, Adam Mould. He'd finished the previous leg at this point. Isn't even halfway through this one. It is very Jackal and Hyde from Mould. And now this has to be big. Forty-five. And it's not. Require 100. So it's two visits at 100 here for Timo to get his first win on the Super Series stage. And no need to think about anything 60. like top tops. It's almost like he just threw the three single 20s there. Yeah, just the, the perfect setup from him. No, no risks taken. 81. Timothy require 40. So, for victory number one, for the Belgian qualifier, double top. He's missed chances already. He's missed more chances. But he Game does get the, the, the win under Timothy his belt. Vibra. Timothy Verbrugge. A 4-2 success over Adam Mould. I think he's again having a little chat with the, the referee there on... 
how to uh, pronounce Timothy. Yeah, but he gets the job done. 4-2 over Adam Mould, who missed loads of doubles in that game. And it was a sort of two halves, wasn't it, for Mould in that match. But the damage was done early and Timo gets the job done. Coming up next, Lisa Ashton will take on Nathan Gervin. Hello again, welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we have just kicked off Series 7. The first six matches of Week 1 have been played and here is what's happened so far. Before the break there, we saw um, Adam Mould go down 4-1 against Timothy Vabre and he got his first victory. The last five games all going against the throw. Before that, Shane McGurk, a 4-2 winner against Lisa Ashton. Johnny Barnes beaten by Mould. Nathan Gervin getting a win against Timo. Barnes getting his first victory against Lisa Ashton. And Shane McGurk, a 4-3 victory um, over Nathan Gervin. And what was a fantastic game of darts. Gervin, he actually led that match 3-0, as you can see here. A fabulous 119 finish to get the 3 0 lead, but McGurk hit back and turned the game around totally. A fantastic, fantastic performance from him. 3 0 down to 4 3 win for the Irishman in that one. Really, really good comeback against Nathan Gervin. And Gervin is back on the stage now. He is about to take on Lisa Ashton, and I'm going to head to commentary to talk you through it alongside Phil Bars. Thank you very much, Chris, and welcome back, everyone. This is a huge game for both players for different reasons. Lisa will want that first victory on the board, and Nathan Gurthen will be looking to bounce back from that disappointment in his last game of surrendering a 3-0 lead.
be interesting to see how Nathan has put the disappointment behind him. Gets it's a quick Lisa turnaround, to which is a good thing. Hasn't had too Neymar. long too long to dwell on it. And Stu. That Lisa will be desperate 60. for those first two points in this Group A campaign. Remember, you can't win Group A today, but you can give yourself an awful lot of work to do. 125. Yep. Ashton. 140. Hoping to get the best possible result. But I think even if she falls into Group C, there will be opportunity for Lisa Ashton there. 96. You mentioned Jamie Kelling at the top of the show, Phil. He probably would end up being favourite for that group, I would think. Adrian Gray's got through that group before, but Jacob Gwynn, very good player, but also on debut. 45. That brings its own challenges with it. Yeah, I think there's a, a real interesting dynamic to the three groups this week, depending on how Group A goes. Twenty-eight. Irvin down to a 45, finish after nine darts. One hundred and twenty-eight, and that's a really good setup. Yeah, and Lisa throws under pressure. Forty-three now already, twenty-four, and that's a mistake, leaving a bogey. As Gervin can step in. I'm not sure how much he can see of this, the way his darts lie. Yeah, look, that, that, that's a fabulous first, dart. Then. We Nathan saw dart go. two. The way it had kicked off with the other one was blocking probably two-thirds of the bed. But Gervin has found a They're special dart there to, throw first. to make Maybe. it one nil. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I think Lisa Ashton feeling unwell. 100. Well, she has been doing this recently, Lisa Ashton, just suddenly Wait, starting so legs on 19s. It almost helps her find her range, almost. I remember, this is going back, so I'm sure social media will tell me 22. she may still do it, but I haven't seen it for a while. From the Langshire area, they, is it, they throw from eight. Eight foot. Yeah. So she used to put her toe on the hockey and then just literally take a 16. step back and it felt like home. Yeah. Loads of variations of darts in different counties. The eight foot throw in Lancashire and the 55. log end boards, the Manchester boards in Yorkshire, where I'm from. A lot of the darts leagues are played on boards that don't have trebles on them. 59. The Yorkshire board is doubles only. Whoa, so that for uh, Nathan Gervin had just been 60. Yeah, I remember seeing Lisa at Lakeside. It was fascinating watching her step to the hockey, tie one, and then literally just sliding it back. She's going to have to come back in this game because Gervin's at it again. Nine, Never mind being out of the traps like the fastest greyhound, Nathan Gervin. He's the hare. He's halfway around the track. 100, and you're requiring 48. It's going to be two darts at double 16 for 2 0. 16. These you require 150. Would expect to be back unless Ashton can find some fireworks and she can't. 42. Now you require 32. Second chance for Gervin for 2 0. Oh, you can hardly see any of that. It's going to be another miracle dart. Is it going to be two in two legs? 16. Not this time around. Lisa require 160. Lisa Ashton could steal the leg. Well, the getaway car will not be needed. 82. Nathan, you require 16. Surely this time for Gervin. It's getting further away. Eight. And Lisa Rushton threw a last start, treble 20 there, to, to leave double 17. 
thinking that the leg was over. The lesser spotted. Was... I, again, this is a miracle dart if this goes. You said the lesser spotted. It was spotted a lot last week. Nathan, you're quiet. Eight. We saw Mr. Connor Scott. Every leg started on it, on almost every leg started on it. Will this leg end on Game double four? It does. Leg. Gervin gets Nathan it Gervin. and leads 2 0. Not for the first time today. The scoring phase has been that superb throw from Calvin, but it was a bit of a doubling disaster Game. in that leg, but gets away with it. Forty-four. And he's already been offered the impetus in leg three with that forty-four opener from Ashton. I know obviously last week you were teasing and asking for 41. what special weeks we could do I've thought of one but we need to speak nicely to our wonderful board manufacturers could we bring back the quadro hey, board for a week Chris Mason did mention that actually during last week's coverage Yeah, so the potential to score 240 would be there 60 I've not seen one of those quadro boards for a long long time I think it I think it'd be something really different and would add something yeah. 57. Yeah, potentially. There's loads of different things that could be done, whether it's the board itself, the format. 58. I'm also very up for the um, zip wires that you were talking about as well. Yeah, see Paul Nicholson. For what would we, what we call it? Darts of Mania? 59. Darts Mania. I've, I've already mapped it all out. The road to Darts Mania. The Royal Rumble starts here. Yeah. I'll have that week off. Nine. I'd certainly commentate on it. One hundred and twenty. They need some pyrotechnics though as well. One five six here for Lisa Ashton when she comes back to halve the deficit in this game, and that's a really. Heavy dart by Nathan Gervin, but he does put it right to leave the big fish. He will get a go at it. Remember, he was quite some distance from it earlier on today against Shane McGurk. Another would have left the ball. Ashton instead gets a go at 100. all the ones. I was going to say, I don't know quite what you're thinking about, Nathan, because there's only one way to go for it. Well, that's not the way to go for this because Ashton now felt like swallowing her own dart after missing the 20 target, meaning she couldn't finish after one dart. Double 16 for three now. Game Three nil. Third, it is. Nathan it's interesting. Go. That little trait there from Lisa was very Phil Taylor esque. That was the sign that he was under well, pressure or not, Nathan not quite at it third. when he used to start biting the flights. Well, Nathan Gervin has been in this position before. He was three nil up in his last game, and that was only what half an hour ago. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be some demons right now. Because he'll be saying to himself, I've been here 51. before. Don't let it happen again. We've got the all ADC encounter coming next. Johnny Barnes against Timothy Verbrugge. 43. Shane McGurk taking on Adam Mould. Then Gerfen returns to face Barnes. So Ashton's got a little bit of a rest after this game, but I'm not sure that she'll want it. If she does find herself three defeats from three. Sixty-five. Sixty. No travel from Garland, but it's still in a fabulous position here. Nathan will probably 45. start down here. Treble leaves 170. 57. Can't find it, but it's still in control. 50. That look from Lisa says it all. They are two beautifully thrown darts and absolutely no luck. 
Yep. When it's not your date, it's not your date. 140. And it could be, ironically, the finish that beat Nathan Gervin in the previous match, the one that wins him the next match. 50. Nathan, you've required 68. Tops. Well, that's wild. 33. Well, the quadro board, she could have got 240. She'd have bust mind. 100. Nathan, you've required 35. Nathan Gerwin for 4 0. Double 16. Can he find the top half of the bed? Game yes, shot he out can. The match. Nathan Gerwin. 4 0 win for the Scot and banishes the demons from the Shane McGurk game. This time he seals a 4 0 victory as he moves on to four points and currently tops the table on leg difference but coming up after the break it is the all ADC clash between Johnny Barnes and Timothy Vivru. Welcome back to the live lounge in Portsmouth, the home of the Moda Super Series, where opportunities are offered to amateur darts players, and two of them are on the stage right now, having come through their respective qualifiers up in the northeast. The ADC UK qualifier, Johnny Barnes, with that black and white shirt, taking on the Belgian qualifier, Timothy Verbrug. He managed to make it through a European qualifier to get here. And now they meet. First leg, it's Johnny to throw first. Game on. On the Super Series stage, having already both tasted victory on it. Timo getting the win over Adam Mole two games ago, 100. two games before that. Johnny Barnes beat Lisa Ashton. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to this 
tie because the winner 60. is going to have a real springboard in this group. We were talking about it. It could be huge for other reasons when they both lost their first games, but now 60. the winner will temporarily join McGurk and Gervin on four points. Yeah, McGurk in action next against Adam Mould. Gervin oh, will then play Johnny Barnes. Mould is also an ADC qualifier, by the way. There's a extra UK now. spot this week and a European spot less. We'll put you in the picture about the groups as a whole. 60. Later in today's show, let you know where everyone else is playing this week. 140. One hundred. Just looking to set this up here. One hundred. It's taking a wicked deflection, is it? Eighty. Johnny requires. Well, the reason for the big pause from Owen Binks there is he was checking whether or not the point was touching the board. He concluded it wasn't. On the first leg. No Johnny Barnes. video assistance needed. And Johnny Barnes finds the finish. It's always an interesting so one, that when the dart kicks up like that Maybe. because the point doesn't have to penetrate the board. It just has to be touching. Yeah, totally correct. Which is why Owen Binks had a closer look. 81. I think he would have scored eight points if it had been touching. I think that's where it was dangling. But in the end, it was 100. academic because Barnes cleaned up the 72 and lands the first leg. One hundred. This already the... One hundred and middle forty. Middle match. Of today's session, seven played before it, seven more to come after it. One hundred and forty. And this is the first week of the brand new series, Moda Super Series Seven, which will feature some familiar 95. names, some returnees, but some debutants as well, some big name debutants. I did say that I would tease one or two throughout today's show, so I'm now going to give you another. We are very soon here at the Super Series going to see a certain Welshman by the name of Louis Williams. 95. Timothy, you 120. Great addition to the cast list for Series 7. I'm looking forward to seeing Louis because we've seen 100. a stuttering career Johnny from Rick him. When, when we have seen the very best of him, it's been superb. But obviously... We know he's had a, a baby in the and last the year and leg. maybe Johnny things Bunch. have just taken a, a, a little bit of a, a different turn for him. So I'm looking forward to seeing where he is. I remember on the Euro Tour a couple so of times, he was Johnny outstanding. First. Game on. Yeah, absolutely. 60. Sixty. I think that win last time out for Johnny Barnes has done him the world of good because now we're seeing what all the hype's around. Everyone from the North East has been telling us how good he is. And now he's averaging 60. just a, a shade under 94. Forty. Fifty. Finding that first start in trouble. Twenty. Like it's got a magnet in it right now, Barnes. Six. 
61. Johnny Rock 136. Well, Barnes having a... 96. A great start to life at the Super Series. And he's teed up tops for a 3-0 lead here. 121. Johnny required 40. So for 3-0. He's got one more at double 10 and Eight finds it. Barnes has Johnny raced into Barnes. a 3-0 lead here. He's moving through the gears. Four flag, it's Timothy to throw first. Game on. Doesn't give much away, but I'm sure he's enjoying this. Forty-seven. One hundred. It's another ton. Sixty. Timothy must be scratching his head here. I'm wondering what's going on. He's he's been put into a whirlwind by Barnes 85. here. Yeah, it's a, a really good display, isn't it? He's averaging over ninety. Johnny Barnes. Forty one. And it could be a Couple of 60. quick fire games. Having just seen Nathan Gervin defeat Lisa Ashton 4 0. Yeah, Barnes is on course here. 100 to serve a bagel in complete control. 85. I've been really impressed by Barnes in this game. But that win. Last time out seems to have given him all the confidence in the world. Nine. Yeah, and we said early on today's finishing was superb. He's three out of five in this match as well. Johnny Barnes finishing like John Barnes. Sixty. Timothy Rock one hundred and forty. Right. Will Timo hold or give? But he's got to do it at the right time. Well, that's the wrong thing there. He's not going to get to the line. And Jolly Barnes saying, catch me if you can. Game but he might. Four he might. Timothy Vabra. Timothy Vabra. Three flag is Johnny to throw first. Game on. Manages to find an unorthodox finish to keep Barnes on three. 66. Needs a treble and 100. finds one. We can have another comeback in the pipeline here. 60. One hundred. Yeah, when he gets that first start right, either just above the treble or at the top, he looks dangerous. 60. 60. Very Martin Adams-esque there from Timothy. Stubborn on the treble. 100. Great Martin Adams doesn't switch too often. Yeah, I think sometimes it depends on your opponent's position in the leg as well. Okay, Barnes was on 3.15. He was able to leave the finish, but unlikely to. But we have seen Timothy make those mistakes when his opponent is on a finish or in closer range to them. So it suggests that it's just the way you go. Some people just like that, and they throw a treble 20 until you're on a finish and work it out from there. 41. You only record 150. Score as many as you can, and then worry about what double you're on. Well, Barnes may be on a double in the darts time. He is. It's double 16. Game what a way to win match. it. An Johnny absolute Barnes. blockbuster by Barnes. The 1-5-2 to complete a very, very polished performance. And the finishing is top draw by Barnes. Look at that. Four out of six.
over 66 percent the 152 adds a gloss to that display and a 4-1 victory puts Barnes on four points and level at the top of the table uh, one of the players he's level with is hoping to make it three wins from three in the next game Shane McGurk takes on Adam Mould Welcome back, everyone. We've just about got our breath back. Johnny Barnes, spectacular way to seal victory in our last game. That stunning 1-5-2 finish. But now, Shane McGurk against Adam Mould. And I think this is a really intriguing game because Adam Mould needs to find something. He was below par last time out. And winning can be a habit, but also losing can become a habit as well. And he's not a very good poker player. We can see every emotion that, that he shows. And this is a tough assignment against McGurk. It absolutely is. And also, beating Johnny Barnes earlier looks like a great Does result for Adam Mould now. Throw first. Barnes Game has on. since won his last two games. He won his last one in style 4-1. But McGurk is looking to make it three from three. Whoa! Which he does with his first visit. Would he do it come the end of the match? Eighty-five. Oh, he knows that was close. It felt good when it left his hand. One. Oh, he will hit a nine dart finish this week. Mark my words. Everyone, note that down. Monday, the twenty-sixth of February, eleven fifty-six. Mystic Murph has called it. He just looks so likely to hit loads of 180s. To be fair, I do agree with you. That out of the ones this hey, week, he one. is the most likely because of the way he plays and that scoring power that he possesses. Whoa, well, Mould gets in on the act. Two in the opening leg.
80. Rejected. Adam, you're required 96. You can see it just clattering the wire. What a steal this would be. Game shot. Adam Moe breaks the Adam throw Mould. in a leg that saw McGurk open with a maximum. That shows Please what he can do. First. Game on. Adam Moe will be thinking, Whoa, where was this 20 minutes ago? Well, that from Adam Mould is back-to-back -back scoring 180s, isn't it? One hundred and the ninety six finish in between. <laughs> Look at those. Yeah, we're only a leg and a half in, but 66. wow. Never let the truth get in the way of a good story, Murph. Look at the numbers. Yeah. Adam Mould has just dropped twelve points off his average of one visit. That's how Nine, you know. high it was before that. That was a shocker. Well he might be putting it right again here. 133. Gone from scruffy to spectacular and no time at all here, Adam Mould. 180. This is incredible from both players right now. Four 180s in the match already. This ain't going to go. So McGurk can do to Mould what Mould did to him in leg one here. 84. Shane, you require 82. Should go the ball first. He's gone the 14s route. I'm surprised. Well, he does get a, dar a double. 68. But it is an awkward one. 38. One that Adam Mould's hit three times today. He's now looking for its next door neighbour. 2 8. Thirty. Close, but no cigar. Require 14. So McGurk, double seven for a level game. Oh, he's chose to split. The second leg. It's, not, it's kind Shane of madness McGurk. from McGurk. to He's won the leg in the end, but to have not gone for the bullseye at 82, but then chose to split on 14. Well, it to throw all seems a little bit crazy to me. I'm with you. The thing that I do like, let's see if he hits this first. No, 140. In the heat of battle, there's still a level head and a, and a maturity there to go, no, I am going to split it. There's a game plan there. Yeah, it may be affected by seeing Mould not split the 38 131. come a cropper. But in the end, 1-1's one, fair, isn't it? It might have been kind of the wrong way around in terms of who won which leg, but certainly to be level after two is fair. Yeah, I completely agree. But... We've got the right score line so far. But again, the averages are still 100. crazy. Standard continues to improve at the Super Series. 96. Didn't see many three-figure averages last week. Of course, the double start. We did see one, and that moved into the top 20 of double start 60. averages. Shane, you're going 146. Alan Warren is still number one. Another. Double 16. Oh, that would have been magic from McGurk. He is just cooking along nicely here, isn't he? Yeah, playing really good. Not just this match, but so far to date. 96. Shane, you're going 16. Double eight for a 13 dart holder throw. Game shot in the Exactly third what there. he gets. So McGurk, McGurk, who continues to go berserk, leads 2 1. Ball player gets Adam to throw first. Game on. I look at some players and I put McGurk in this bracket. Daryl Pilgrim, Scott Taylor, and I genuinely find it astounding that they don't have tour cards. But I think they're three players in particular that if they ever get a card, you're not going to get it off them easy. And I, I put Cameron Menzies in that bracket. That For, for years, everyone 93. spoke about Menzies as the best player not to have a tour card. And he finally got it and has not looked back since. Yeah, totally. One. Well, that's going to become harder and harder. Good 
going to have to do well in big tournaments to, to keep hold of two cards nowadays, I think. Hey, it's he won. And getting to them is difficult enough. We've seen players win pro tour events and lose two cards in the last couple of years. Absolutely. 97. It's an interesting one, obviously. Fair the winner of this week has an awful long wait until Champions Week. And if you are the, the player that does it, it, you have to manage your schedule and making sure you're still sharp for Champions Week can be a challenge. 57. One hundred and twenty five. Adam, you've got one hundred and seven. Yeah, dart double fourteen for two apiece. Seventy nine. Shall you require one hundred and forty three? Been such a close contest, this. Both players remain at that one oh three average mark. Mold ready to draw level. 55. Adam, you require 28. Back to his favourite double of the day. Game and hits it again. Leg. Adam Moore. He's, he, he's laughing. He, he knows that that double seven has bowled him out of trouble today. If they get what Shane to throw first. Game on. Yeah, half. Half of his winning legs today. One hundred. I've been on double seven. That's remarkable. One hundred and forty. It's been a good response from Adam Mould as well. I know we've praised Shane McGurk here, but the way Adam Mould has bounced back from a very disappointing one performance last time out, that this is the Adam Mould we were expecting from minute one. There we see, look, the 180 tally go up, the average go up, 105 now for McGurk. How often does that happen? You get two players playing their best game at the same time. Yeah, I suppose one of those ones no, that we always say what? in a poor game, the other players were waiting for the other, each other to, to fire, where this one, they're both firing and responding to each other as well. Whoa! And it's another match. Shane, you're back on 130. Huge moments in this tie. 130 for McGurk. Keep it straight. And he's going to get a dart of double five. Game brilliant. Absolutely fifth, brilliant Shane from McGurk. McGurk. And he's dropped his poker face as well. He doesn't give much away. But he knows so that was a first. monster moment Able. in this tie. We saw a celebration from him. We don't get many, Murph. Yeah, but when it's big, they know it. And that was big in more ways than more than 130 for a dozen dart leg for McGurk to lead. Mould was sitting on 81 after hitting a 180 at the time. The 100. sixth of this contest. Ninety-five. What a game of darts it's been. Does it go the distance? I think it's fitting if it does. It's been such a good contest that I want to see more of it. Well, Mould's still very much in the box seat in leg six. First to a finish. McGurk can only get there by finding a maximum. That won't happen now. 100. Adam, you're 143. 143 isn't going to go... So now it's all about the setup. 65. Leaves a potential two darter. Now this needs to be big from McGurk. Two trebles minimum from here. Needs another to apply maximum pressure. Same scenario as last leg. Great dart. Great start. Double six for the finish. 66. On the wire. Shane, you require 101. Will Shane McGurk 
get a match start on this 101? The answer is he should. He will. Double 16 to win it. Hey, too far. Close, but not close enough from and McGurk. And so Mould gets a go at double six. And now double one. Well, it could have been worse. He could have ended up in the double ten and not having this opportunity. Which he's yeah, taken. He on the sick flag. Using the marker to force a decider in what has been an absolute belter of a battle. First. Game on. Six one eighties. A 104 average for Shane McGurk. A 101 average for Adam Mould. And one leg will determine which 46. of them will take the two points. And in such a high quality contest, that is a mistake. Only 46. Adam Mould is going to want no, to jump all that. over that. It's a good score, but considering that first start, he'll be disappointed. That should have been more. Still, the treble hunt continues. 60. In the context of this match, two visits without a treble is a drought. Darting disaster, one might call it. 59. A leg without a 180 is a drought in this match, isn't it? Finally, finally locates a big one. 134. And it keeps him in the leg. If McGurk wins this deciding leg, one will be furious because with those two travellers visit, there was an opportunity. Yeah, McGurk's back in charge. He's going to be on a finish first. 131. And look at the finish. He's left. We've seen it once in this match. At a big moment. Are we going to see it again? 100. As the winning moment. Yeah, 130. The repeater is on. It's double five again. Game and Shane McGurk has produced that champion checkout twice. Absolutely remarkable scenes from Shane McGurk. And what a closing out of that leg. 134, 131, and then his second 130 finish of the match to deny Adam Mould in an absolutely brilliant game. 103.39 the average for McGurk. Mould just dropped below a ton. They hit six 180s between them, but two 130 checkouts proved to be the difference as McGurk is on the march. Three wins from three for him. Nathan Gervin in action next. He is going to take on Johnny Barnes.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we have got six games left to play on the opening day of not just week one but a brand new series as well and Phil the standard has been pretty good hasn't it so far? It's been an unbelievable morning of dark so far that week one can always be a little bit cagey sometimes where players are feeling it out and just going into it but just stunning darts even, even from players that we didn't know a lot about. It's like, yeah, we can see why they've qualified for this. It's been brilliant. Let's have a look at the results then from today so far. These are the games that have been played. The opening nine, um, and actually not many going with the throw. Shane McGurk, though, winning all of his matches. And Johnny Barnes has been an interesting player as well. He's got two wins, but you do have to worry for Lisa Rashford. As you can see, no wins from three for her. Yeah, and it was quite surprising because we spoke here earlier on and we were looking forward to seeing Lisa play. There were so many good signs from her at the seniors, but that's just not quite happened for her as of yet. But look, there's still time to turn it around. If she can win her final two games, four points, it's not ideal, but she's still in contention. Yeah, well, from one end of the table to the other, Shane McGurk, he's been electrifying today, hasn't he? Yeah, that last game against Adam Mould was just brilliant from both players. But McGurk's finishing under pressure, couple with his big scoring. We said he was probably the favourite and he's lived up to that tag so far today. And it's just been a joy to watch. It's just so rhythmical as well. And he doesn't give much away, but those celebrations, he knew how big this game was in the context of Group A early on. And to do that finish twice, the perfect way as well, two treble 20s and double five. Uh, to win that match when Mould was playing so well just shows that he's got the ability to, to raise his level when needed. Yeah, they were both big for different moments as well because Adam Mould was threatening a broker throw. I think he was sat on 81 for the first one and McGurk took it out. And then to do it for the match in that pressure as well was just brilliant from him. Um, Johnny Barnes against Nathan Gervin is the next game. And we'll start with Johnny. Debut for him today. Impressive one. Yeah, look, he was uh, maybe a few nerves early on, but... From the moment he won his first game, then moving into that second game, we could see what a player he was. And we spoke on comms about it. There's been a lot of hype in the northeast, people telling us how good he is. And now we're seeing that as well. So I'm, I'm expecting big things from him for the rest of the week. Now he seems to have settled here at the Live Lounge. Look, it can be daunting coming here for the first time. But look, he's now in it. He's in the mix. And I'm looking forward to it. And as for Nathan Gervin, his opponent, look, he led Shane McGurk 3-0, then lost that match 4-3 but then bounced back by winning his next game 4-0. The bounce back was the important one on that one because, look, that Shane McGurk is a fabulous player, so for him to reel off four in a row, he could do that to anyone. But Nathan's the type of character that he lives every dart, lives every emotion. So the way he bounced back was the impressive thing, that mindset of got it out of his mind, swept it aside, reset himself. So I'm pleased for Nathan that he's added that to his game because we've seen him come here before and one defeat kind of spirals for him, but... Today, he look, looks ready for this. Yeah, we'll have a look at the league table then after all the players have played three matches and this is what's happened so far. So McGurk, as we said, three from three. Lisa Rashton, none from three. Um, McGurk living up to that favourite mantle. But I think we've seen performances from Adam Mould just then despite defeat from Gervin and Barnes that shows that McGurk's not going to have it easy is he absolutely not and the next two and a half days are going to be really fascinating because there's so many key little battles and key components to this group now that you can make a case look i can still see lisa troubling this group if she can win our last two so i don't think anyone's out of this group where normally we can see a quality split sometimes where you think right the top three are head and shoulders and the bottom three are going to battle it out for those positions not in this group. This is wide open. I'm really excited for this. Yeah, slight little announcement to make here now at the Super Series for this week's players. There is a slight change to the lineup. So in Group B, Tony O'Shea, who was due to play, sadly been forced to withdraw through injury, and he has been replaced by Richard North. So North will join Bav Patel and Reese Robinson in Group B. Tony O'Shea no longer playing. Phil, you were at the World Seniors. I commentated with him for a game. He had this problem with his finger. Unfortunately, he's been unable to fix it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. It looked like a real horrible injury that he had to go and get hospital treatment for. And look, I understand him giving him every opportunity to, to prove his fitness in brackets. Um, but look, Tony will be back and look, health comes first. He doesn't want to come here and put on a, a poor performance because he can't play properly. So the right decision, I'm sure we better fit him in so at some point in the future. But look, Richard North are more than capable 
player we've seen him get to finals here before. So another good addition to Group B. Right, we'll get your thoughts on today at the end of the show and of course during the matches, but we're about to get the action back underway. Um, it's all about trying to qualify for Saturday nights here at the Moda Super Series. Welcome back, everyone, to the Moda Super Series, week one of Series 7. And it's been an absolute belter of a morning so far as we head into early afternoon. I'm looking forward to this one, Murph, because I just think there's a real intriguing contest brewing here because Nathan Gervin or Johnny Barnes can join McGurk level on points at the top of the table. So huge motivation for both players. Yeah, absolutely. McGurk running riot in terms of the table at the moment. Perfect start to the day and week Let's for him. Let's it's Nathan to throw first. Game on. Oh, it could have been Nathan Gervin, couldn't it, when he led Shane McGurk 3-0. That was turned around totally by McGurk. But Gervin is signalling his intent from the off here. 140. Barnes has been very good on debut as well. Recovering from a 4-3 defeat himself to Adam Mould in match one by Third. winning against both Lisa Rashton and Timothy Vebreu. 125. Yeah, and Johnny Barnes may have to find something even better than his last game to break the Gervin throw here. He's started with real purpose. Finding that trouble 20. Fifty nine. It's interesting as well that obviously Nathan plays with that moulded flight and stem Ooh, combination. It's a it's a real I think it's a generational thing as well, because we see more and more youngsters playing with the the moulded flight and stem where some of the Nine, more experienced players still play over a traditional flight and stem combo. Yeah, actually, it's quite an old thing. I didn't realise that a couple of years ago that players 60. used to play with like and a plastic one-piece setup. Obviously, it's been much more technology going into it. And there's a lot more give, isn't there, the, the rigid ones. Although some players still do, do use really rigid... 11 flight and stem setups, but you see that the Gervin ones, the design so that the flight will basically just move out of the way rather than bounce off it. One hundred and eighty. Oh, won't get 69. out of the way. Good dart. Double 12. Uh, I think it's something that frustrates me and frustrates a lot of people who watch darts that you should know 61. what you what you're on before you throw. If I hit the forty five, surely you know what it leaves. Well, this is interesting. Double eighteen. Game shot in the first. Don't often see that. Johnny Barnes. It's quirky, but it works. It's dangerous as well. Because it's Johnny to throw first. You may not Game. get a dart a double going that way. Yeah, However. well, you get you could get one at the bull, couldn't you? Sixty. The ball, by nature, would be blocked if you'd hit the 25. You'd leave 61. It's 11 ball. 180! Yeah, look, he's, he's hit it, so 
it was right this time, but the risk and reward scenario going hey, that way, I think the risk outweighs the reward. Where going the 18s, you've got more room for manoeuvre. 140. Well, they do well to win this leg because Nathan Gervin started it spectacularly. Hey, 180 five. followed by a 140. That second dart was aimed at the bullseye. I don't think that was a bad attempt of a treble 20. It was meant for the bullseye. Yeah. Hey, Gervin looks at 56. 56. To break straight back. Missed the big number. 36. There yeah, has been just a few of those, hasn't there? Stray ones from Nathan Gervin, if you're going to be ultra critical. John Barnes came into the previous leg out of nowhere and nicked it. Can the same thing happen here? And can't come inside. 50. As with his last dart, and Barnes could pick his pocket once more. Yeah, Gervin will fill. He should be tuning that up. 10. Nathan Barnes has passed five. up the opportunity for 2 0, but this is no gimme. The Much better leg. from Gervin. Just composed himself there. And we are level at one apiece. So look, it's Nathan to throw first. Game Breaks on. back, effectively cancelling out that break of throw from Barnes. Earlier on. 45. One hundred and forty. A sloppy first visit from Gervin has been punished by Barnes and he will be sensing another break opportunity here. Twenty-eight. But that's a mistake. Doesn't capitalise. To the relief of Nathan Gervin. 96. 100. 60. 57. I'm just keeping an eye on the on the chat in YouTube. If you do have any questions for myself, and Phil Bars alongside me, please do get in touch. We'll answer any of your queries relating to the Moda Super Series. Keep it respectful. 60. I think and we've got one or two impersonators in there, to be honest, as well today. Good afternoon, Michael. 96, Johnny Brock, 116. Yeah, I wasn't, wasn't aware that Michael was a darts connoisseur away from the circuit. Yeah. 60. I happen to know that he doesn't ever watch darts, so if you're going to pick a darts player to uh, impersonate in a YouTube chat, probably 64. don't go for MVG. Uh, which one will impersonate Michael Van Gerwen here? Nathan Game Gervin the will, third leg. with a nice, Nathan clean Gervin. 64 finish. Yeah, I just feel that he took more well, due care and attention on that finish than maybe in the Game first couple of legs. And we saw that because it was clinical, where maybe he was just a little bit sloppy, missing big 60. numbers and maybe not 100% focused. But that was brilliant. Plenty of support for Gervin as well. 140. I think there are young players with a lot of talent. Everyone just wants them to succeed. Not everybody can follow the same pathway as Luke Littler. 180. They, of course, produce plenty of darts like that on this very stage. 
Now, actually, he's likely that he will be watching. He does like to tune into the Motor Super Series, our two-time champ. I'm sure the Xbox will be on FIFA 100. on one side, Motor Super Series on the screen on the other. Well, uh, another treble gets him to the same finish as 100. Johnny, but not on this occasion. So six starts from here. I think you'll fancy this. One hundred and nineteen. Should be two all unless Kervin can apply pressure and then Barnes misses. Johnny required forty two. Game shot in the four play. Yeah, good stuff Johnny from Barnes. Barnes. Certainly showing he's more than worth his place in the Super Series this week. There's no doubt about that already. Fifth leg, it's Nathan to throw first. Can he Game. get a win that would see him go level with Shane McGurk at the top of the table? It'll be interesting to 100 hear from Johnny at some point this week that what his expectations were coming into this week as a qualifier, whether it was, I'm here, I want to enjoy 45. it, or... I'm here. I can win. Yeah, well, it's yeah, interesting, isn't it? Because qualifiers, by definition, have won to get here. So it's just another step up, isn't it? You're winning in your local area. 41. Do you expect to carry that on? Or, or is it like a, a team that have been promoted from the Championship to the Premier League, for example? And it's about giving a good account of yourself and... At least hoping to be rewarded with an invite back, 45. which we have seen happen with plenty of players that have first appeared as ADC qualifiers. In fact, little known fact, Luke Littler's first appearance here was as an ADC qualifier. Yeah, and that's the pathways that are now available to players outside the 128. It's never been a better time to be a dark player right now. 140. Sixty. Nathan, you've got one hundred and twenty-three. One, two, three, and with time on his side, he is not going to bother going the nineteens route here. Might wish he had. Twenty-six. He's made a bit of a mess of that, and a big visit here. From Barnes makes this ninety seven tricky. Ninety seven. They can give a coin ninety seven. Yeah, goes double double. And we know how seventy six. Oh, well that's too many mate. What the single and got the double after getting the single when he wanted the double. We know how good Barnes' finishing's been as well today. 58. Nathan, you require 21. Needs to make sure of the big number. Double eight. Game shot in the Does fifth leg. get over the line Nathan in goes. that leg. Again, made it difficult though. Last time out we Six saw a very eye-catching performance from Gervin. This time it, it's the other way. He's, he's doing it the gritty way. 130. Well, as promised... We'll answer some of your questions, Steve, ab asking about the new season Six. starting so close to the previous season. Well, yeah, basically we have 13-week series, 12 weeks of qualifying, and then a Champions Week. And we used to actually start the next series immediately, beat, but for the first time we put in a special week to separate the two series, and it seemed to go down really well. So there'll be 41. more of that coming in 2024. Can we expect to see Ashley Coleman here sooner rather than later? 100. Yes. Yes, we can. Simple answer. We will be seeing Ash Coleman. Those who have been following us on social media will know that that's been spoken about. You can also I see him at the UK Open. 1 for you Phil you're a darts connoisseur someone asking what darts Johnny 100. Barnes is using have you seen those before they look similar to a Peter Wright dart I think it might be the Mamba 
Oh, he's got that many of them, but I, I think they're very... Uh, uh, they might not be the exact one, but they are very similar to to a Peter Wright Mamba dart. Seventy-three. Couldn't find the the bullseye there. Barnes, but he will be back. Fifty-nine. Johnny Rakwan. To win leg six. We'll try and get that confirmed, but PB is the man to ask. Thirty-two. Nathan, you require 160. I just had confirmation from a learned friend in our production team. They are indeed that Mamba Dart. To know the name as well, that's impressive. 64. Is it, or is it something Johnny else? Requires 16. Game shot in the well, sixth The finishing leg. from Barnes has been something Johnny else Barnes. today. We go to leg seven. Seventh from final leg, it's Nathan to throw first. Game on. Uh, another question, how do I get to playing the Moda Super Series? Whoa, Someone asked, well, we kind of answered that already. Go to an ADC, qualify it. Plenty of opportunities through the ADC. 85. Scott Hunt and his team doing tremendous things. For the amateur game at the moment. The next themed 60. week, another question that keeps coming up. That will be revealed in due course at some point in this series. Just be patient, please. 85. We've just seen a, a couple of one-sided matches here. Follow There we see the Barnes dart. Sorry, the 55. Gervin dart. Now we'll see the Barnes dart. Sort of torpedo shape. As we come to the end of this match. Eighty-five. Who will win the match? Gervin will have a go at the one two one we saw Barnes miss in the previous leg. And I'm disappointed with myself, I've got 55. the name wrong. It's the Peter Wright Medusas. Oh, okay. Disappointed with myself. <laughs> Forty-seven. Johnny Rockwell, one hundred and thirty-six. Yeah, Peter Wright darts could mean anything. Johnny Barnes, though, might be able to produce another big finish here. Not going to happen on this occasion. So Gervin will ever go at seventy-four for the win. Ninety-six. Nathan, you require seventy-four. Has to be focused here because that's why disaster for Gervin. Forty-two. Johnny required. And this could be big for Barnes, who wants top Game to shot topple Gervin. Johnny and that Barnes is a huge victory for Johnny Barnes. Four-three over Gervin, who he usurps, leapfrogs in the league table, and pips at the post in that match. A four-three success that sees him move on to six points, and actually, for now, top of the table on the same points as Shane McGurk who is in action in a couple of games time but before that Adam Mould will take on Lisa Ashton
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Lisa Ashton is back in action and looking for her first win of the day. On the opening day of Series 7, the opponent, Adam Mould, who himself has only got one victory but has played very, very well, particularly in his previous match. An absolute Brahma between himself and Shane McGurk that went the distance, both players averaging near to, or in McGurk's case, surpassing Three figures in the average in that one. Well, Ashton has two games left, both against ADC qualifiers. Mould himself and the Belgian European qualifier, Timothy. As there gets Adam Ladre. to throw first. And game Mould on. has the darts in this meeting, game 11 of today's 15. Yeah, we've seen in different performances from Mould from the brilliant. 34. To the slightly off, so I'm interested to see which version we get here. Also, a little break 41. for Lisa Ashton. It'll be interesting to see if she's managed to rekindle that form at all. Yeah, she hasn't played since game seven when she 46. lost 4-0 to Nathan Gervin. Before that, two 4-2 defeats in the hands of the top two, Johnny Barnes and Shane McGurk. So hey, you would think that the, the last two players she got are the players that She's most likely to beat. They're the two immediately above her in the one league hundred. table. They're winning this one. She joins both of them on two points with one of them still to play. Just doesn't look settled yet, does she? Where doesn't normally give much away, but you see some frustration growing in Lisa at the moment. 57. Eighty-five. Adam, you've one hundred and sixty-four. Two visits at least to sort this out. Adam Mould. Forty-four. Not the best return there. And Lisa Ashton might be about to make him pay. Ninety-seven. Not quite. Adam, you've one hundred and twenty. Tops for 1-0. Brilliant shot in the first from Adam Mould. Adam Mould. We were wondering which version would turn up. It's the version Same that played Lisa McGurk last first. time out. Game on. Ton topper for the opening leg. Yeah, he's grown into the day, hasn't he, Adam Mould? 43. McGurk in action next against Timo Verbrue. Then Mould plays Gervin in his last game. If he gets out with... Six points 60. today. I think he'd be very happy, particularly because that would mean Gervin would only have four. Completely. It's a, the way the fixtures have 95. come up today. It's a real intriguing contest for the pair. 55. Sixty. Thirty-nine. Interesting to see if Lisa goes down here. Yep. Another. Eighty-three. One hundred and thirty-four. Leg two hanging in the balance here, but it is Lisa who has the darts, so his marginal favourite, but needs to find a 60. treble. She can't. She's down to a finish, but it's a big one. Mould could be down to something more manageable. One hundred. Lisa require one hundred and sixty. Two treble twenties required. Not going to happen. 100. Adam Mould has the opportunity here for a 2 0 lead. It's not going to go. So Lisa Ashton looking at 60 for 1 all. Lisa requires 60. 
two at tops for a level game. That one's clipped the flight. Four. Can't recover on tens. Adam, you're right. One is 16. Game shot in the second. There it is, 2 0. Two Adam Mole break of throw. And now. So look, it's Adam to throw first. Only Sir Ashton has it all to do here. Yeah, Mould is, as we said, he's just 45. getting better and better as the day goes on. And as someone who's won here before, he knows it's a... 41. A marathon rather than a sprint. Can't win anything on a Monday morning. Yeah, well, I think what is true is you can not go through from 41. this group on a Monday, but you can go out of this group. You can put yourself out of contention for winning the group. And if Lisa Ashton loses all of her matches, then she will have effectively done that. Of course, it doesn't mean that you're 97. out of the week. We've seen players finish bottom of Group A and go on to win the week, of course. In fact, the very first player to win a week at the Super Series 79. did that, Kieran Tiam. Bottom of Group A on Wednesday, winner of the week on Saturday. 100. We've seen players go 100. on. 100. Unbelievable winning runs as well. I remember from our time in Southampton that Sean McDonald, I think, lost his first seven or eight games in Group A. 58. And then went on an unbelievable 12 or 13 game winning run. One hundred, Adam. You're like one hundred and sixty-seven. One six seven to really illuminate the live lounge, but he can't do it. And Lisa Ashton will get a go at the one forty. Lisa require one hundred and forty. <coughs> one hundred. Just takes the ton off it to tee up tops. Mold on one ten. Level 17. No, so Lisa will get a look. 50. Lisa require 40. To break straight back. Tops for the Lancashire Rose. Tens. Getting nervy. Can't 20. hit. Adam, you require 60. Some frustration there from Lisa. 40. But gets a lifeline. Mould can't hit. Game shot Lisa further. does. Lisa She's back in to. this one. And the first leg, Adam Mould well, looked as if Lisa he was just carrying on that form Game on. from earlier. But it's gate, Chris. It's just nosedive since then that he can't reproduce it. And that's been his issue all day. Yeah, absolutely. We spoke about potentially other players being in and out. Thought Adam might be a little bit more consistent, but he has been doing the oki koki today. Like we did there. Sadly, most didn't. 44. Do keep your comments coming across our social media channels at MSS Darts on Facebook, Instagram, X. We also have a TikTok channel as well. 100. And comments in the YouTube live chat. We've now got 45. a couple of apparent celebrity darts players in there. Who else have we got joining MVG? Apparently Stephen Bunting's now. 140. Joined in, but again, unverified. Carl Hamilton is watching, and that certainly will be the real one. Giving Johnny Barnes the big build-up, and rightly so. One of the funniest imposters I saw in the chat room once was um, Barack Obama. Huh. 
98. Adam Yerbach wants 70. It's going to be one dart at double 16 for 3 1. Game show Pins on the four flag. Adam, Adam Mould has restored that two leg cushion and will have the darts in leg five. If Eric gets Adam to throw first, game on. An ADC qualifier, Adam Mulder. Others coming up include Adam Lipscomb, who is the answer to a quiz question here, of course, at the Super Series, who was on the receiving end of the first ever nine dart finish hit by a woman when Six. Fallon Cherrick made history here. Michael Huntley has come through a qualifier as well. He'll be playing here soon. Michael Burgoyne as well, remember him. He's going to be making an appearance. I think he was nicknamed the Burger Boy, if I remember rightly. I think you are correct. 87. Fifty-seven. Lisa just needs to try and find something here. Needs a spark. Twenty-six. A brilliant this from what? Adam Mould. Just not following the first dart at all, is she? Now this for a win. It's second of the day. Doesn't have to bother about 14 balls out, so can just leave 52. this teed up on double 16 for his return. What pressure will it be under? Enough. But Adam Mould has three clear darts to win it 4-1. Double 16. Game Only needs the one. Match. And it is Adam, Adam Mould who gets his second win of the day, beating Lisa Ashton 4 1. It was an indifferent performance. We saw some good stuff. But in the end, gets over the line 4 1. 80.16 average. 4 from 7 on the outer ring. The highlight, that magical 120 finish. But coming up after the break, Shane McGurk will try and go back to the top of the table.
The action continues here at the Super Series stage, and it is a stage that has been lit up by Shane McGurk so far to date. The Irishman has won all three of his fixtures and put in some fantastic performances so far. And he's looking to make it four wins from four matches when he faces the Belgian qualifier, Timothy Verbrook. First leg, it's Timothy to throw first. He has Game the on. darts, and he has shown some decent stuff himself today, but only one win from his first three. The final two will determine whether it's a good, bad, or even day for him. 60. Yeah, you get the feeling this could be a tough assignment for Timothy that he... He's shown flashes, but I'm not sure if he's done it consistently 60. enough to trouble McGurk in this one where McGurk's level, we know roughly where it's going to be. Not the the pigs and troughs that we've seen from from Timothy so far. The, the highs have been good, but the lows have also been low. Remember, everyone, if you haven't yet, make sure you drop us a follow all social media platforms at MSS Darts. Plenty going on on our channels. It'll be 60. good to have you along. I was enjoying engaging with the YouTube chat, but now you just seem to be arguing amongst yourselves. 60. What's the topic of <laughs> conversation that's causing the arguments? They're actually arguing about arguing, Phil, so I think we better leave them to it. 81. Sounds like Christmas around my family's gaff. Did someone say it? No, we didn't. No, no. Well, Phil Bars has had to leave Six. us for the rest of the day, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, if you go down that road, Phil, you will be stepping out. And I thought you were asking me to step 40. in. Well, McGurk steps up to the hockey and he's not in control of this leg. It's his opponent who's going to have the first go at a finish. 93. Timothy Rugby, 106. The 1-2-8 is tricky if he comes back, McGurk, for it. He will. But this is this is never a gimme. And this, this, this is almost 40. one that I think they prefer to hit the, the single on here. Because now you have to hit another treble. And that's the problem. He threw the dart pretty much exactly the same as the first one, but it deflected off the barrel into a neighbouring bed. 116. Super recovery. 120. Unless Timo can find tops with his last dart for a ton topper. 80. It's not a million miles away, but McGurk comes back for a break. Well, how has he found now. that? That is an incredible Shame dart. You could see how much he could see, and it literally hit the only portion of that double that was available to him. Second leg, it's Shane to throw first. Game. Magic from McGurk to break the throw. And then kicks off with a max. After breaking the throw, he's moving through the gears. One hundred and forty. Four perfect darts. It ends there, but it is five out of six for Shane McGurk. Yeah, and this is the level that he has that if he goes to that place, he's so hard to beat. Ninety-five. One hundred. Eighty one left after nine is a high level. Eighty one. Shane require eighty one. Gone for the ball. I like it because Timothy's not Game on a finish. On the second leg. Absolute Shane superb. McCoy. 
from Shane McGurk. Now look at Timothy to throw first. Game on. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Opponent not on a finish. So he uses 60. the bullseye at the start of the visit to take away any temptation of going for it at the end, ensuring he would get a dart at the outer ring. 58. Doubles his lead and once again looks almost untouchable in this group. The only time he's looked in trouble was that 3-0 deficit he faced against Nathan 41. Gervin and he fought himself out of that one. Even in the match against Mould, when Mould was averaging around 100, he was always averaging higher. Yeah, completely agree that one hundred and forty. He just always kept him there. Didn't let him get anywhere near him. Three or three for McGurk. May start on the nineteens. One three three leaves the one seventy. Ninety four. That's something that's improved so much in recent years. Is the way players set up shots from so far out where in previous years that you'd never think of going down that early to leave a 170. You'd just be like, ton 140, score as many as you can. Yeah, it's a good habit to get into. And I think that's why players do it all the time 96. now, for example, in that situation. His opponent wasn't going to leave a finish anyway, but just learning those patterns of play is why they, they'll do it even in that scenario. 112. So looking for that treble. Fifty-six. Timothy record one hundred and forty-three. An outside chance here for Timothy. It's there. Steps back. 190. And doesn't hit. Shane required 56. Yeah, by some distance as well. Double 16 was the target required. That looks very inviting. Game shot on the third leg. And it Shane does McGurk. get used. And it puts Shane McGurk 3 0 up. Full leg at Shane to throw. Going back to the, the 1 4 3, just watching Timothy. He never looks settled on that dart of the double. The other two were really good darts, but he just stepped back, stepped forward and never really committed properly in that one. And the result was an absolute flyer at the double. Well, Jay McGurk is off to a flyer in this opening week of Series 7. It looks like it's going to be four from four. He could make that five from five when he plays Johnny Barnes in the duo's 59. final game. It's also the impact it would have in the practice room if he could go five from five because tomorrow you'd walk in there, chest out, beating that drum. None of you could beat me yesterday. But if he beats, but if he goes five from five, beats Barnes, who's his closest rival at the moment, and then beats him again when they play first game tomorrow, no, I mean, very early on, he's looking very difficult to catch. Only one player qualifies for finals night from Group Eight. If you are new to the Murder Super Series, the 60. format sees one player from Group A go through, they have two days off, then the remaining players are split into Groups B and C. Group C gets underway from one o'clock on a Thursday afternoon with two players qualifying 59. from six, and Group B, 10 p.m. Thursday night with three players qualifying from five. So there is a big advantage of finishing second or third in this group. 140. Absolutely. That group C can be brutal to get out. Because there's not a lot of room for error. Yeah, very rarely do we see a Group 85. C Timothy player McCoy win 65. the week, but we did see that in double trouble last week. Neil Duff played Group A, went into Group C, and then went on to win finals night. 33. Shady McGuire, 121. Well, that's remarkable from Timo. Well, he maybe knew something we didn't. He's gotten away with it. <laughs> 41. To yeah, he required 32. Madness. He had 62 left after his first start. Didn't go 12 bullseye. But Shane McGurk on 1-2-1. One, one. Game shot on the fourth leg. Timothy Vabro. 
He's got away with one massively there. Should be a parental really warning on that finish. Please do not try this at home. Well, I'm just wondering whether or not this is actually Game on. premeditated from Timothy because we did see him earlier as well with 61 left and two darts. Opponent on a finish going for the 25 for hey, double 18. Theory. Maybe he just avoids a bullseye at all costs. Sixty. It's also interesting how your opponent reacts as well because there are some players that 100. we know would take umbrage to that and it would wind them up. Can you imagine if you done that to Kevin Payne? Fifty-eight. Sorry, I was just thinking about that. 81. Yeah, we may well see some of the players who played last week in the next few weeks as well. Of course, 100. playing in a specials week doesn't mean that that's you done for the series. You can return. I've had a few questions about players that, have, that are going to appear 80. in the future. And one name that has been... Often asked about is Fallon Sherrick. When will she be back? Well, I'm going to tell you, she is going to play in this series. I won't yet say when, but she is Whoa, confirmed. 180. It should be quite 160. an interesting group that week. Brilliant 180 from Shane McGurk, who's bossing this group this week. 100. Shane McGurk, 103. Is this the match-winning moment from McGurk? Not this time. So Timo will get an opportunity to cut the gap to just one leg. Game shot on the fifth leg. Timothy for bro. Making McGurk work. See if they get Shane to throw first. Yeah, that, that dart Game. at the single 17 was a little bit close to the treble in the, in the small segment of the 17 as well. This is this penultimate game, by the way. We're going to move into the final three fixtures after it. Mold, Gervin, Nex, and McGurk plays Johnny Barnes in a game which could well determine who's top of the table. And Ashton against Timo in the final flings of Monday. 60. We'll do it all again. 9.30. On Tuesday morning, live here on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel, and again on Wednesday when Group A will be concluded. Then it's double sessions Thursday and Friday before finals night on Saturday, 7.30. But if you fancy being here, One get yourself a ticket. It is free of charge. Tickets are available via dartshop.tv. One hundred and forty. It's a great, unique, intimate experience of arrows action. Couple of quid booking fee. That's all. We've had some 100. fabulous crowds in the last few weeks, as well. You've seen the pictures. Get yourself along and be part of it. Ninety-five. Shane McGuire. One hundred and four. Will there be another leg in this game, or can Shane McGurk? Do the biz. Oh, great dart. Absolutely exceptional. 88. Timothy Rakorn, 139. One match dart has come and gone for McGurk. He will be back, though, to go four from four. But it's under pressure. Shane Rakorn, 16. Double eight for a 4 2 victory. Surely that's a great guide. Go and it is Shane McGurk. Is four from Shane four. McGurk. A four two win moves him on to eight points in Group A. He just puffs out of his cheeks there and gives us a raise of the eyebrow. He's worked out where the camera is. 85 72 average for McGurk. Two maximums, four from nine on the outer ring. But coming up after the break, we enter our final round of fixtures. And it's first up, it's going to be Adam Mould against Nathan Gervin.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Moda Super Series. And here we are. The league table for you. Shane McGurk is four from four with a round of fixes to go. Johnny Barnes in second. Nathan Gervin and Adam Mole both on four points, which makes this game next absolutely huge because the winner would jump to six points. Lisa Ashton currently looking for her first points as one opportunity to go. But Murph, this should be a belter of a game between Gervin and Mould. Yeah, and it's to determine which one of them will have a positive record today. Both have got two victories, as you just saw. And whoever wins will finish on six points. That could actually put them joint second, depending on what happens in the last match. For Shane McGurk and Johnny Barnes, if Barnes is beaten by McGurk, who could go perfect, then he will be on six at the end of the day. And then Lisa Ashton in action in the final game, looking for her first win. Wesley gets Adam to throw first. Game on. And Mould has the darts here, so Galvin is going to have to find something to bag the points. 60. Eighty four. One hundred. One hundred. Mold struggled in his last game, although he bagged the points, it it wasn't the the eye-catching Adam Mould that we've seen at times today. Yeah, his best performance came in defeat, didn't it? To Shane McGurk in what, I mean, may already be the best match we will see this 45. week. It was marvellous. 140. One four two for Adam when he comes back. Forty five. And with Maybe no pressure at all on it. Seventy one. Gervin not found his scoring boots in this one. So Mould will be back for seventy one. Ninety one. Adam it requires seventy one. Tops for one nil. Tops yeah, is found by Adam there. Mould. Adam Mould. Now, following the interest in last week's Nathan double trouble first. special week here at the Super Series, we have been asking for your ideas and thoughts on what else you'd like to see. One hundred and eighty. I'd like to see a nine dart finish in this leg. Over to you, Nathan Gervin. 60. Well, his hands may be cold, but his darts have been hot in this game so far. But yeah, one of the most popular answers to that has been a, a pairs week. Now, we did play some pairs last week, did it? 85. Away from the live show, and I've just been informed that you will be able to watch... The outcome of those matches live. Not live, I'm saying live. We're live. <laughs> We're not live now. 180. Yeah, on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. 4 pm today. So just because the live action stops doesn't mean that the action itself stops. Some pairs. 140. Going up on the YouTube channel today. And it's pairs with a twist. So make sure you set yourself a reminder or better still. Make sure you subscribed. Playing devil's advocate with you in a second. Let's see if Nathan Gervin can pin this 41 first. 41. Nathan, you require 41. Time on his side. Ah, the old treble nine route. 
34. Interesting why that double seven's come up again. Well, that's Adam Mould's double, isn't it? He said it four times. He slipped from the single into the treble Nine, and ended six, up on that target. Now he has to clean seven. up the seven in bits and can do on double two. Or can't do, Five. as it turns out. Adam, you're recording 79. And for a leg he was never in. He's going to get an opportunity as Adam Mould. It's going to be two at double 11 to double his lead. And he's in the wrong double. Well, look at the scores there. One on two, one on six. Every Friday night down the dog and duck, you see this. But Nathan Gervin Nathan finds a madhouse to get the leg in the ledger. Right, going back to my, my point before these two started mucking around on doubles. If we were to have a pairs week here at the Super Series, are we picking the pairs or are the players picking it? Well, 140. I suppose we'll put that out to tender. What do you think? Watching at home. I think we should pick them. Well, I think it should be randomly drawn out of a hat. 140. Used to play in, a, I spoke about the dog and duck, they used to play in our local pub at Christmas, a, a random pairs tournament, 100. so you'd get drawn out with a pairs partner, but that would happen every single round, so the players that went through would go back into the hat and you could get drawn out with a different player. I like that. Yeah, so 57. Two play people who won the tournament might have only played together in the final. Big fan. 180. Big fan of that from Adam Mould, who leaves 81 after nine. And he's having these spells today, isn't he? He's having these kind of legs. 60. Yeah, that's the problem, though. It's only spells. He can't hook it up for any period of time right now. That'll do. 20 for tops. 61. Not quite in. I thought it was there. Gervin can... Just put some pressure on here. One does exactly that. Adam, Such authority 20. in that throw then from Nathan Gervin. Surely. How, is, no how, how are they not in? Yeah, referee Nathan Owen Binks had to go and have a real look round the corner. And now Nathan Gervin, who upped the ante with the maximum, could pinch the leg. Forty-eight. Adam, Not quite. Adam off the hook. Just throw them the same as last time. They were so well thrown darts. It's getting closer. Game shot and and Adam Mould does find it. You can Mould. see by that reaction that I think all six of those darts that left his hand felt so well, good, but it was then the last Sorry, one that went in. Game on. Well, Mould leads 2-1 in this midfield contest. Forty-four. There's someone on YouTube suggesting that it's done like the World Cup, so we play with national partners for a pairs week. Hey, someone else five. suggesting they like drawing it out. Someone else has suggested Darren Webster and Ron Mullenkamp being a team. Sold. <laughs> 96. Yeah, don't forget, there is pairs play on our YouTube channel at 4pm today. That will premiere. If that's your thing, 100. tune in. Nathan Gervin taking a long time over that, 68. but it paid off. Yeah, it just wasn't set in his hand, was it? Consistently inconsistent. 100.
I'm not sure if he just went to get a little bit of chalk or some wax or something from his case there. We saw him rummaging around trying to find something in there. 57. Yeah, we often get asked as well whether Super Series consider an extended format for the semis and finals. And, and I, I get the question, but there's plenty of research done with our 40. partners and viewing figures and other areas that support us. And, and actually, 42. there is a great appeal in playing the point, same 76. short format all week. So at the moment, that will be the plan. A little bit like it. I mean, it's a bit longer. A little bit like the old news of the world, which was played the same entirely 56. all the way through the tournament. And that in itself has an appeal, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I get both sides of the, 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 the question that we saw at the Pro Tour. used to be the same all the way through, but in recent times, the semi-final goes up by a leg and the final a, a leg as well. So I, I can see both sides of it. Double ten. Double five. Game found by four, Mould right? for three Adam one. Mould. Yeah, I think on that, I quite like the fact that this is different because just about every other tournament in the world now does increase as it goes Adam on. To throw first. Yeah, I, I like it. And it's unique and distinctive to our product. 57. Also means the uh, production crew can get in before last orders on a Saturday night. 57. Well, most of them. 100. Some of them just can't handle their drink. 96. One hundred and forty. Well, Adam Mould is handling Nathan Gervin very, very well. 2.04 after nine. Gervin gets himself back in the picture. But all about this exchange now. Where would he be after these darts? Yeah, all about the setup play. 60. And that's not very good for Mould in this situation. Gervin will want to jump all over that. 160. Jump all over it. He has tees up tops. Oh, needed another for a dart to win the match. Instead, the game may well go on as Gervin takes aim at double 10 and finds it to cut the gap to 3 2. And we are back on throw. Is that Maverick style? Game of on. Nathan Gervin. He didn't see him in it and then produces a spectacular setup play to seize the opportunity. 100. There's a 3140s and 3180s in this match, and they've come at decent times. 57. Seventy-six. Just two games to come after this, and then Monday 100. will be done. The first day of the new series. Fifty-seven. Just opens the door for Mould with a big visit. No Six. trouble again. We said they've both been streaky today. They've been in and out in this match over five and a half legs so far. Just double checking his score. Doesn't need to 19. move across to the 18s to leave a finish. 100. Now you record 170. Left this a few times today. Fair I have fears. a feeling he might have laid up in that position. This point of the day in this match, a leg he needs to win. 
Mould not on a finish. I know Lisa Ashton was asked for the no, quick fire teacher. questions on no, our social media, well. and she said if they're pretty close to being on a finish, she'll lay up, but if they're miles away, she'll go for it. And you can see the thinking. 72. Adam, you're but the game could be over here. Mould looking at 92. Surely he stays there. Done double double. And there we Yay, have it. That is spectacular from Adam Mould. I wasn't Mold. sure whether that was the right decision or not because of the marker he had for the first start. But he's got his own maverick way. And what a finish from Mould. You can see what it means to him by that celebration because that means he will finish the day minimum of third place. Potentially he can go to second. But all eyes now turn to our top of the table clash next between Shane McGurk and Johnny Barnes. Two games to go at the Modus Super Series. And the penultimate fixture is a top of the table tie between Shane McGurk on eight points and Johnny Barnes on six. If you haven't heard of Barnes before, he's an ADC qualifier from the North East. Lives up in Darlington. And he's looking to climb to the summit of the Super Series stack in Group A. But Shane McGurk has been irresistible today and you would make him favourite to win this match and in doing so go through the card what a start to super series it would be uh, fantastic day some fantastic performances like but we have seen first. enough from Game Barnes on. to suggest that he could at least give McGurk a match I think he could give him a match it's an intriguing fixture for our penultimate game and will have a huge bearing on Group A as a whole because as you explained earlier Murph that this will be their first fixture tomorrow so if one of them can do the double they put themselves in a golden opportunity 
the darts for no, McGregor. I've just been in and around the treble all the time. Almost magnetic from him to date. Precision arrows from McGurk. Right on cue. And of course, has already qualified for 79. Lakeside this year. Chance here, though, for Barnes to break in leg one. Uh, second treble here. Oh, 95. that's a disaster because he, had he stayed straight, he would have been on a finish. But now McGurk can set this up. You'd expect another 100. Down to a ton. But Barnes is going to have it under some pressure here. Nine, Again, five. that slide. Oh, Drifting to the treble five. Disaster. 68. Johnny Braquire, 81. Bullseye for an early break. It's not there. 50. He's had Johnny an opportunity, Murph, but couldn't take it. Yeah, will he come to rue that miss? Game shot in the first. There. Maybe he will, Shane because McGurk. McGurk has made him pay. Double 16 to give Shane the lead. Second against Johnny to throw first. As he bids to make it the perfect 10. It's interesting as well. He doesn't give much away, McGurk. But just that little tap to the side of his head saying, concentrate. He knows the importance of this tie. Yeah, head on the game. Mind on the task. 99. I do think he's got quite an interesting throw, Shane McGurk. It's almost sort of like slingshot 60. catapult style isn't it he brings it back but holds it for quite some time under his eye before before releasing the dart yeah so it's a proper sighter isn't it he brings it all the way back and he won't trigger until he's ready one hundred now we have a look at it there so he brings it all the way back holds under the eye and then releases it. 55. There's a lot to like about it. Yeah, we'll see the sort of largely curtailed 60. how he comes all the way back, doesn't he, McGurk? But when we contrast it to Johnny Barnes, what we just saw, he's his sort of really shortened. 59. Johnny Rock, 100. The match could be lengthened, those on 141 here. Yeah, it's almost a, a, a stabby action from from Barnes that that follow through doesn't go all the way through, and all of a sudden this eighty one is under some pressure. Quite yeah, we saw Barnes miss a dart in the previous leg. He's got two darts in this leg. Sixty nine. Shane, you require Gonna call it now. This goes, Phil. This goes. McGurk's in the mood. Mystic Murph is here. <laughs> oh, Shane. 36. Shame. Johnny Require, 12. Johnny Barnes, double six. Now he's chasing. Six. And for the first time today, Johnny his Require, finishing 52. has let him down. It's been his strong suit all day until the most important one. McGurk has won at tens to break. Game shot the you just know. Day. Shane McGurk. Yes, yeah, six missed across the first two legs. That starts at double by Johnny Barnes. Look at Shane to throw first. And Shane McGurk Him. has doubled his lead as he continues his quest for a perfect start to week one of Moda Super Series 7. 58. Always nice to be the first name through to Champions Week. Feet up for 40. 11 more weeks. Watch over a hundred players battle it out to try and join you. One hundred and eighty. McGurk is just starting to purr along here in our penultimate game. One hundred and forty. Good response by Barnes. It's back to back ton forties actually. He'll go for a ninety nine score here 40. to leave a finish, but can't quite manage it.
Barnes is now favourite to break back because of that visit from McGurk. Well, he keeps leaving 81 and they're not finishing it. And McGurk is in the mood to punish. 53. Johnny but this time he can't one. apply the pressure that he has before. Oh, 170. It's still some pressure, isn't it? It ain't much. But it's enough for Barnes to go for 56. the ball. He thought about not, didn't Johnny he? It Vakon crossed his mind. 70. And now he's wishing he didn't, because he's only going to get two darts at a double, 46. rather than the full quota he could have had. It's double eight. Nine. Well, last week was called double trouble, but Johnny Barnes is suffering from that here. That is now nine missed darts across three legs in this game. He could have been 3 nil up. Well, that's a big, big chase gone wrong there from McGurk. Yeah, in that situation, he didn't need to chase the treble. Just make sure of the big number. Because it has cost him. And now Barnes to get himself back in this tie. And it's there at last. It was almost an absolute disaster for him as he went 11 without hitting, but on dart number 12, finally pins it. And to break throw as well. The game back on throw. One hundred. His one forty in this match has been nothing short of spectacular. Yeah, we can see what all the hype from the northeast was about. One hundred and thirty nine. Half a dozen one forty scores from Johnny. One hundred. He's had twelve darts at double in the game. Shane McGurk who's winning the game has only had three. 100. 60. Does that just open the door here for McGurk? One hundred and twenty one. He is down to a finish, but Johnny Barnes can set this up. 83. Shane McCoy, 141. 64. Johnny McCoy, 118. Disaster. Missed the big number and it's cost him an opportunity. 23. And McGurk, 77. 77 can break straight back. He's going to get two darts at double ten. One at fives. And this time, it's not his saviour. Choices here. Could be treble 19, could be bolt. Now it may be double-double. Oh, it's old school from Johnny Barnes. 49. Often when someone's missed the treble 19, they'll go for two double 19s. Double five for Shane McGurk to lead 3-1. Double two. Oh, Angel nicely done. Leg. Shane McGurk. One away then from a perfect day. A little puff of the cheeks there from McGurk. He, he knew the importance of that Angel. leg. He does lead 3-1. Johnny shakes his head as if to say, how am I 3-1 behind? The opportunities I've had in this game. One hundred and That's McGurk 40. racing towards the line and five from five. 140. 91. Finds the cover when he needed it. 140. So another for Barnes taking his tally to eight 140s. Needs a treble to leave the 170. 45. I say the angle there, you could hardly see it. He was hunting around, just trying to find a hopeful angle. Yeah, this game may continue a little longer. 60. Barnes leaves 161. Excellent, excellent player. And 
reliably informed multi-talented as well, Johnny Barnes, ex-pro cricketer. 57. Big fan of that. We have a 161. Well, what's Shane McGurk done there? Hasn't left a finish. Now, he might have just seen that. If you're not going to go for the ball, don't bother going for the treble 17. 97. He is absolutely berating himself now. The error of his ways has been realised. Tries to put it right. Gets down to a similar range to Barnes. 48. Shania requires 68. Barnes misses again. McGurk, is this your moment? It's going to get one dart, a double 16 for the perfect day. Going and only needs the one the dart. Match. Shane McGurk Shane is McGurk. perfect on this Monday in Series 7, Week 1. Five from five, ten points. And he knows where the camera is. Huge fist pump for Shane McGurk. That 4-1 does not tell the story of this game. The one from 14 from Johnny Barnes on the outer ring does. But that concludes our penultimate game. Coming up after the break, Lisa Ashton looks to get her first points on the board. One more game to go on day one of Modus Super Series 7. Yes, we are in our seventh series already. And one of the most familiar faces, Lisa Ashton, is on the stage. Her last appearance of the day. Still looking for a first win. But it's experience against a debutant in Timothy Vabre. Oh, in Binks, the referee, ready to get proceedings underway. He's been here from the start, as has the man alongside me, Phil Bars, and what a start we've had to Series 7. Absolutely. We we spoke at 9.30 this morning and we were both expecting fireworks this series. I wasn't sure Where's we were going to get them to first birds. up out of the blocks, but it's been an, an unbelievable day of darts so far. And Lisa Ashton, if she can win this game, 
it will just give us something to cling to oh, tomorrow and on into the rest of the week. Yeah, you mentioned Kevin Painter and he went eight games 45. without a win last week. And what happened to Painter is he kind of had a, the right results at the wrong time. His so best days were Wednesday and Thursday, which are the worst days really for that to happen. Yeah, I completely agree that he didn't play as badly as what his points tallies suggested. I thought he played some 60. really good stuff at times. But like you say, at the wrong time in terms of the, the group standings. 42. One hundred and thirty four. Forty one. Lisa, yeah, I don't think her performances have been as good as they were last week, and she had a really st struggle of a campaign in her couple of days. She was here on Saturday night taking in the finals night, but it's, it's interesting because she was brilliant at the seniors. 53. And I think it was the first time really I thought, yeah, she's over that injury. Maybe playing a lot of darts in quick succession has come 60. too soon for Lisa Ashton, but I hope not because I hope that we do see the best of her between now and the end of the week. Yeah, that's one thing that I, I like about the Super Series here that 100. the players that have to travel a, a big amount of distance in the UK or the Europeans or the international players that come in that if they don't make Saturday night they often come down and watch because a lot of them don't travel home until the Sunday it's, it's nice to see them in and around the, the live lounge tops for Ashton and that's pulled Timothy required 24 One more, a double six and twelve. It's a fair distance off, so 35. Lisa Ashton gets a second chance at this. It's going to be two at double sixteen. That looks an inviting guide. Game That's much first, better though. from Lisa. Lisa That's Ashton. the Lisa we expect making those little adjustments where needed. If she wins as well, you know she's level on points with Timo, so, so won't be stranded Game. at the foot of the table. And, and also, that Group B. Scenario looks a little more likely. I also think she's more than capable of 60. any day where she wins three, four, maybe even five matches. You just never know. I think in another group A, I'd still think it would be possible if she four. ended on two points to have two good days and get to the top. I just don't see Shane McGoat losing many matches, and that's why I'm kind of writing her off already, and, and will be writing Timothy off if he loses this match as well. 40. That's the problem. It's the form of McGurk that is the worry. It's not that Lisa, um, Adam or, or Johnny, whoever, aren't capable of running through and producing big results. It's I don't think there's enough opportunity for those results to happen over the way McGurk is playing right now. Yeah, he's quite apt analogy for the, this week, but he's gone round the, the first couple of corners like Max Verstappen and there's just no catching. 125. Lisa Ferrari red with two of her darts. And she'll be looking to score at least 99 when she comes back. 100. 100. She's going to do better than that. 177. Absolutely outstanding from Lisa Ashton. 92 if she comes back. 97. Lisa well, that was interesting. 92. 64 left. Treble 20 to leave double two. Lisa went for the ball 25 there. Old school route. 76. If she's going to remain old school, it'll be treble 20 for double eight. There's a treble 20. 84. Can't quite find the double eight. Well, this was four. Timo's choice. The old saying, down the dog and duck, you left it. Game brilliant, second absolutely brilliant Timothy composure Cabrera. because that switch is difficult. Yeah, it was so close though, wasn't it, to the double top. Well, look, it's Lisa to All square. Game on. In the final game of today's session, a reminder that Shane McGurk has had a 
perfect day and we will be hearing from Shane Wait, at the end far. of play so do stay tuned following the conclusion of this one Forty one. Forty four. Ninety six. Just a few little signs here that Lisa is beginning to rediscover herself here because those darts there, although it was only 135, the grouping was a lot tighter than we've seen all day. 59. Last time she was here, and I, I don't know, we'll have to ask her if that injury is still affecting her, but last time she was here, we saw a bit of this where Lisa was sort of, almost sort of trying to protect herself early in a day it's and wasn't yet. really getting the best out of herself. But then as we got to game four, game five, we saw her just kind of throw a bit of caution to the wind and just 44. go for it. And it must be difficult when you've suffered an injury and, and it's hampered you for so long to not be conscious of overdoing it. And it just, in darts, it just maybe stops you extending the arm as much as you should, etc. But that one's perfectly pitched, as is that. It's double ten. 124, Timothy, we're going 115. 15. There's another ton topper on here, though. It's not going to go. So Lisa Ashton will return 51. after that brilliant Lisa attempt. 10. At one three four. She's usually pretty good on double five, but on this occasion she can't find it, does she? Six. Timothy I was going to say, 64. does she bust or does she leave double two? That was a choice. I mean, it will be one dart tops if he hits a sixteen here, which he does. Forty four. He didn't fancy the old trouble twenty double Lisa two route this time. Four. It really worked for him. Lisa fancies double two, third. though. Lisa and She's got a 2-1 lead. Four player gets Timothy to throw first. Game on. We were talking 64. about styles earlier, and Timothy's come, darts, comes back a long way under his chin almost. Like we saw the sight of McGurk's is right under his eye. Nine. The arm is quite low from Timo here. Look, it's almost right under his chin. Yeah. 60. Interesting. Style is a tall guy, isn't he? 100. One hundred. A lot of players here would start on the nineteens. Lisa. One hundred and thirty-eight. For some reason, started on the eighteens. Now we get a look at that throw, Phil, that you just spoke about, all below his face. Yeah. One hundred and forty. Well, the dart must almost be out of vision as he brings it back. Lisa again using that eye as a as a line of sight, a little similar to Shane McGurk, although much more quicker, much more in one motion, no delay in releasing. Lisa Ashton's doing some bad things here. The lesser spotted double seventeen is back. Yeah, well it all started when she started on the eighteens on three oh six, but she has worked her way down to a double. It doesn't matter which double it is. Now she went for a two there, surely. Yeah, that's not a miss of a double 17. That's a miss of a big two. 18. Timothy require 40. Double 10 for 2-2. Two, two. 20. Ashton Lisa gets away with 16. it. And for a break of throw, 
and daylight in this game. game. Lisa Ashton there. is one away Lisa from Ashton. her first points of the day. If Flair gets Lisa to throw this first. This will make the Lancashire Maybe. Rose feel an awful lot better right now. Ninety-six. And like we said, it will just give us something to build on. Two points here. One hundred. Fifty-eight. One hundred and forty. Timothy's whole demeanour is ice cold, isn't he? No emotion. He's up against it, though, here. One hundred. I think he needs to find a treble. And he's persevering with one that's blocked. Sixty. Yeah, I think that's just a little bit of stubbornness that should be switching away there for open beds and... Instead of trying to 60. go through Tungsten, it's never a good outcome. He isn't being punished, though, here by Lisa Rash. And this is her throw as well. She had the darts in this leg. 100. So, 101 left. Where will Ashton put herself? What pressure can she apply? Plenty. 137, Timothy. Rebond a lot. One. This 101 is not going to go... So Lisa Ashton will come back for match darts and her first points on the board. Brilliant. Double ten. Thirty. Timothy require forty-four. Knew that was okay hitting that treble. That's not okay. It means only one dart to save his skin. And that is only if he gets a big number right. He He's does, and he gets a double right Timothy as well. Lebrun. And Lisa Ashton still has to work to pick up her first win. Gets Two match starts have come and gone. Game on. For the Lancashire Rose, will she get any more? She will have the darts in the decider unless she can conjure up an opportunity in this leg. 59. 83. 63. Good adjustment. 66. But then goes the other way. 60. Maybe just opens the door. But needs some trebles. And they're not there. 45. 100. Our start could be huge. Gets him down to a finish. Are we all set to go to a deciding leg here? Match number 15. 59. Timothy, record 158. No need to even go out here. All you want to do is leave it as handy as possible. 100. And that's pretty handy. 138. Timothy, record 58. Two at tops for three all. We and are going the, the distance. Timothy, Timothy levels it up and we're in to a seventh and final leg. Seventh and final of leg. This contest. Lisa, Lisa Ashton has the darts. But she has already mismatched darts. Will she get any more, Math? I don't know. You've been giving us predictions all day. I thought you were going to mystic something up for us again here. Well... Right now, it's not looking likely, is it? 45 to start. 60. I 
Yeah, and that reaction tells us everything. 81. Massive last start, though. Gives her hope. Fifty-seven. First time all day he's decided to switch. Has he got? A, has he got an earpiece? <laughs> yeah, chasing the trebles around. Ashton finding a treble, and maybe she will be getting match-winning darts. She's made a move in this leg. One hundred. Eighty-eight. Down to one four seven. One. And has six at it. Doesn't need to go for it. Yeah, she'll feel an awful lot better should she win this match and at least get points on the board. She'll sleep better tonight 97. if she does that, and she is going to return with three darts in hand. And 50 points. 140. Is this the moment point. that Lisa Ashton 50. gets her first point on the board? It's going to be two at tops. Tens. And 30. more match darts have come. And they have gone. Ashton. Agony. Thirty-two. But she does get another opportunity. The Brewer misses a couple of darts to win the game himself. And Go Lisa Ashton finally match. picks up a Lisa win Ashton. on Monday at Modus. It's a 4-3 success against a Belgian qualifier. Shake of the head from Ashton as she walks away. She made it more difficult in the end, but was good value for the victory. Really, really important win for her. It means that nobody will end up on no points come the end of the day. But Shane McGurk has 10 points. He's won all of his matches. And we will be hearing from him after this short break. <laughs> Well, what a start to the new series here at Modus. And Shane McGurk, well, went berserk, didn't he, on day one? Uh, winning all of your matches, Shane. But, I mean, there were moments in there when it could have been different. How do you feel about how it's gone? Yeah, there's definitely moments. I, I took um, took a good few big finishes out when I needed it. I think I had two 130 finishes again at Adam, and they were they were crucial. Like, they were crucial to the game. Like, And then um, I started off well today, and I think I just... Kind of just gave me the confidence to keep pushing on, and then it was I was trailing again, Nathan, and I just thought to myself, he can win that many legs, I can win that many legs, so just keep going and see what happens. And luckily enough, I got over the line in that game as well. So that kind of kept kept me going, and then just more confidence as the day went on. When you saw the opponents that you were going to be up against this week, um, what kind of chance did you give yourself? Did you expect that you were the favourite in this group? No, definitely not. Um, 
I don't even, I, I wouldn't even know who would be the favourites, but uh, I just I just knew I was playing well at home before I came in here, and I was like, if I can take that game finally with me to on a Monday morning, uh, I'll do all right. Like, and I was aiming for at least three wins today, like, and I got five, so I'll definitely take that note, no doubt. Shane, the way the fixtures work here at the Super Series, that last game was huge because not only did it finish your session here today, it's flipped and it's your first game tomorrow. So by game two tomorrow, you could have a huge lead at the top of this Group A table. Is that something that you think of? No, I, d I definitely don't think about that. I just take it as uh, one game at a time. You know, um, Every game is different. Like You could easily lose a game as, as much as you could win it. Um, and anyone that plays here knows the pressure that everyone's under. So even if you're a good bit ahead in the leg, you're in a double and someone's not in the finish yet, it's not over until you hit that double. So I just kind of kept that in my head and I was like, trying to keep myself level-headed and and uh, luckily enough it worked out for me in the end. Well, let's just recap the fixtures, the results from today. Um, Phil, you've been alongside me in commentary all day. Shane won all of his matches, but would you pick out one in particular as the key moment for him today? Uh, two, because it's for different reasons. The comeback against Nathan that Shane's already spoken about, but the 4-3 against Adam, because it was the game of the day. They were both in the zone. And the two one thirty finishes at key times were crucial, but especially to win it in that moment also breaks the opponent's heart as well. So going back into that practice room, he must have been a little bit oh, like downhearted and deflated because that, that was a monster moment in that particular yeah. game. And the context of the group, come Wednesday, that could be the moment. It could be, yeah. Uh, um, to be fair, we both walked off and we were, we were both happy with the game. Like We both knew we played a savage game of darts. And uh, I think that he's not going to feel any bad about it as much as I would have if I lost it. Um, they just hit the two 130s, I think, at the right time. And uh, the one to go 3 2 up, and then the last one to win 4 3. It's, it's just all about timing darts. Like, it's, it's mental. Like. Out of those two games, Phil's just mentioned that one with the two 130s, which was a really high standard. Both of you averaging over 100 for the vast majority of the match. All that comeback against Nathan Govan, which was the hardest to win? Uh, I don't know. I think it's. Um, I got more involved in the game against Adam. I think that we both kind of just settled into it, and we both just played off each other. And we did, like I didn't even notice what the score was for a while. Like you know, like you kind of just play the board as it is, and you want to just beat your the other the other person's score. Um, I think that maybe we just got both engrossed and all that there. And I think the game against Nathan was probably harder to come back. But well, once I went a couple of legs down, I was like, he can win that many, so I can win that many. So just take the pressure off myself and I settled a bit more and luckily I got away with that. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the first thing you said when we came into the studio before we went live was, it's only Monday, so you know there's still a lot to do. Yeah, that's uh, what, there's 10 more games each left now for the rest of the Tuesday and Wednesday. So it's, it's nothing... It's, it's a good start, yeah, it's, but you can easily win, lose five games tomorrow and like everyone there is capable of winning that group. Like There's no, there's no one that's excelling more than anyone else, so I think that maybe like, I just need to be on it tomorrow and get a good start, hopefully, and if the start goes well for me, then maybe that might put pressure on people. That's kind of what I'm banking for tomorrow. Well, let's have a look at the group table. Um, it's going to make very nice reading for you, Shane. Ten points, maximum points on the opening day. Uh, but Phil, Adam Mould, Johnny Barnes, um, both ADC qualifiers, they're in second and third spot at the moment, and we've seen what Nathan Gerwin can do as well. Um, there is going to be plenty of competition for Shane, isn't there? There is going to be plenty of competition, but I still go back to the point that I said earlier, because of the flip in the fixtures, that by the time... Adam and Johnny play again, then potentially there could be a six point gap at the top of the table. Now, we all know six points is an awful lot, especially here when someone's playing so well as well. So, I think that if Shane can win that game tomorrow, he then becomes an absolute huge favourite for this Group A title. The others will put pressure on him, but six points may be too much to overcome. Yeah, is that the target to get it? as big a, a lead as early as possible and really put the pressure on your opponents. Every, everyone wants it, but for me, it's just to get over the line. It, I, every time I come here, you, you kind of want to finish in the top three, at least. You know, trying to get yourself in that Group B spot. Um, group C is, a, is pretty much, I always called it a dog fight. Um, but if you can get yourself into Group B, you're, you're, you're not doing too bad. So that was kind of my goal for coming over here. But with the start that I have, I can hopefully I can just play the same again tomorrow and get a few points on the board and just keep adding to the tally. Like. 
And just generally, it's the first time we've had a chance to chat with you this year, a brand new series starting. What are the aims and ambitions in 2024? Um, hopefully this year I could, I'd, I could win a finals night here. I've played in a couple of finals nights and I lost in the final once. Uh, I'd love to win one. I don't know what it feels like, but it would be nice. And then a lot of my attention is going to be focused on the lakeside at the end of the year, which I qualified for. So I'm kind of hoping that all the tiers could practice for all that there because you're, you're playing behind lights. You're playing behind all the cameras, so it's, it's definitely good practice. Like. Final word from you, Phil. A really good start to the new series. High standard stuff. Incredible start to Series 7 that me and you spoke at 9.30 this morning and we said we were going to get fireworks in the series, but the standard that these guys have produced today has really set the bar and everyone else has got to try and chase that. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of this week and the extra 11 weeks we have as well. I think it's going to be a fabulous series. Well, thanks for your input today. Congratulations on your performances today. Um, it may only be Monday, but it has been magic from McGurk who will be top going into Tuesday here at the Modus Super Series.